<laughs> Hello, and thank you so much for joining us for your ROH and Impact post show for July 6th already. My mm. goodness. I think that's the second week we went live with like us being silly and just yeah. keep going live in the middle of everything. But I'm kind of here yeah. for it, honestly. July 6th. <laughs> did you watch some fireworks the other day, Kate? Did you get your July 4th on? Did you eat some hot dogs? I more, um, I more was just like trying to shield my poor dog from everything. And I still yeah. had to review NXT, which okay. it's, it's a weird week when NXT is better than ROH. I'll tell you what, uh. but <laughs> <laughs> so sick world. if I've ever said that before, I don't, I don't know what, a, what America this is. I don't know nothing. if anyone has ever said that sentence before in their lives. That's the first time ever in history. It's crazy. Definitely not since the black and gold era. That is right. for sure. But guys, right. I'm a little, I'm a little sour on this. All right, it's a little hot out. I'm, I'm coming in a little bit hot on ROH today, but I'm not really mad. I'm, I'm just disappointed. But mm -hmm. get in your super chats and your humper chats to chat along with us. I feel like there's not a ton to talk about considering we're two <laughs> weeks out from a freaking pay per view. We're so sorry, you guys, but it's not our fault. It's Ring of Honor's fault. We were it just is not along for it the is. ride. We are. We're trying to review things over here, and there's just not a ton of meat on the bone, but we are going to review tonight's episode. We're going to talk about everything we like, stuff that we're not so keen on. Guys, get in your super chats and your humper chats to get your mm -hmm. question or statement read on air. We'll also ask you to please leave a thumbs up on this video as everybody's interest in the product is waning. Your support definitely helps because people are tapping out. I've gotten uh, some messages that were just like, ugh. How do they expect people to, how can we get people to watch our show if nobody wants to watch that show? That's, I know. Numbers but don't you know add what? up. I managed to do it on Tuesdays, and I'm confident that we can do it okay. here this week. I believe week. in this, too. I believe in it. I'm not giving up on my sweet ROH. It's going to come back around. It has to. It simply must. It simply must, mm -hmm. Reg. Mm -hmm. But if you could leave a thumbs up on this video to keep the buzz on this show alive, that would be fantastic. And we'll also ask you to subscribe to Fightful Select as well. So much information coming out of Money in the Bank weekend, heading forward, Drew McIntyre contract news, AEW news, stuff on Danielson's injury. I'm sure there'll be ROH stuff if they have a card at some point. I'm sure that Sean will find out about it. Uh, so subscribe to Fightful Select. And we will also remind you, if you want to subscribe to this very YouTube channel, that would be fantastic. Uh, we're doing more with the subscription features and... Uh, we haven't really built those out before, but at the very least, you'll get fun little notifications uh, that let you know that all of our shows are live because we have like a million of them because we're really popular over here. Every so, day, somebody's talking about wrestling over here, you guys. Amen to that. And we also have the Fightful Overbook channel, which I'll give a quick plug to as well, since I'm getting all my I'm getting my S in, as uh, Brian Cage would say, mm -hmm. <laughs> who we're going to talk about later, but Go to Fightful Overbooked. I do a show there with Joel, and despite Joel being on it, it's a pretty good channel and a lot of fun. You can see Joel on the back end of this show uh, anchoring the, the impact half of what's going on, which I hope was a little bit more fun than ROH today, uh, but yeah. lots of great stuff on Fightful Overbooked. You get Tag Talk. You get uh, the Bread Club, which will get all your New Japan stuff covered. They're on a heater right now, man, going into the G1 season. So Wish we were reviewing a New Japan show. Oh, I'm, it's Thank goodness it's on such a an upswing, because I feel like the itches <laughs> I used to scratch with my ROH, I'm getting over there now, but... Yeah. It can be a pretty dense and daunting scene to dive back into. So check out the Bread Club over there. There's a million great shows uh, happening on Fightful Overbooked as well. So we got you covered in post-show land. We got all this extra content for you on Fightful Overbooked. But we're going to get into some ROH today. Reg, the same complaints I had last week, I got this week. Turn and I got back. some new ones. Yeah. And I, I don't want to be caring about things, but I'm starting to lose a little bit of faith here. We've seen a lot of the same things happening where we're not getting stories, but we're two weeks out from pay-per-view. <laughs> Starting to feel like AEW Dark with titles and that you have to pay $10 for. I don't know if that is the best method to go about our madness. I also feel like we have two women's storylines that have dominant women involved, but today was kind of disheartening, in my opinion, to see like 
man, another American television brand where it's just like a couple of women's matches that are a couple of minutes long when we were like getting like three women's matches that were 10 minutes long. Um, it's, it's, it's not headed in the direction that I was hoping it was going to be. And I feel like every time I feel like we're going to get a bump in clarity about what's going on in this product, it gets murkier instead, which is just a bummer for me. But <laughs> what were your overall thoughts tonight? And what are we doing headed into this pay-per-view, Reg? That was my overall thought. Is I got about halfway through the show and I was like, there's a pay-per-view coming up july 21st and they don't care if, if if i was a viewer that's supposed to be subscribed to the show or you guys are supposed to sell the show to me on this ring of honor program it's like no you would think that at this point we'd be talking about six or seven matches talking about some heat that's about to happen in two weeks trying to sell tickets trying to get people to go there and it just wasn't that it was just another ring of honor if there was some a, a lot of fun shows started out the show with super heat but it just was wasn't what I would expect them going into a pay-per-view. It's very confusing. It's we have officially, I think we're just gonna have to accept it, Kate. No, this I refuse. Is, you have to. I, I don't there's nowhere to go. I can't. We are, we are stuck in a corner. Heart. This is what it is. It's AW Dark for ten dollars. But AW yeah. Dark didn't have champions. You know what I mean? So it's it like AW Dark didn't feel like things were missing because it was what it was. This feels like there's things missing. And you mentioned we're headed into this pay-per-view with, like, it's not even that we don't really have anything announced except for what got announced tonight. It's that we don't even have inklings of things really outside Nothing. of this Dark Order story. So it's mm -hmm. like, it's not even like the, oh, but they're going to announce it thing. It's what the hell's going on with this damn product thing. And that isn't a great way to put a product on television that has some of the best wrestlers in the world and is also the most expensive subscription service out there for pro wrestling. Like I'll tell you what, good luck. Uh, good luck getting people to continue next month. If we're keeping it real, like when their subscription comes up and people are like, Oh, am I going to give these people another $10 and they're giving up that there's not a lot of people that are going to stick around. It's not the way you get people to stick around. And it's very unfortunate because ring of honor, it's ring of honor. And there's some, great wrestling that still happens and there's a couple of stories that are being told but for the most part it's just matches and like if you're not righteous red you're just not gonna care too much about that yeah well and it's i it's just hard to buy into anything because it's you have absent champions um except for athena who's amazing mm -hmm. but i feel like she's probably gonna end up moving on sooner than later right like inevitably so, so <laughs> She kind of deserves to at this point. Right. Like, how many times can we watch her tear apart these? I, actually, that's not true because I could watch her tear apart porcelain yeah. trash pussies. 200 any more day times. Of the week. I'd be good. Yeah. I'd be like, wow, again, this is great. Yeah. But she's probably kind of bored with it. So uh, I would like to see it pick up. Though we do have a lingering story that we didn't see tonight. Reg, even little things like last week we were in several different cities. Tonight we had the kingdom out there. We had no Stokely Hathaway after all the like vignettes and the the drama that got built out like i just feel and he posted like... something really cool and funny on his own social media page that they could have probably pl played here but but they know. didn't and it was an hour and 36 minutes they had they had room for time but yeah that's what's also when you're talking about the women's matches i was like we're short uh on time as we've been used to we've used to been going two hours they could have added a women match another women's match or and made the other women's matches longer than what they were just gave them a little bit more meat to get into because we got time it's roh we're doing whatever we want on the men's side so we might as well do whatever we want on the women's side sure if you're just gonna have matches throw on some banger matches but mm -hmm. reggie simmons uh another name twin for you you got the righteous half with the righteous you got reg yep. over here saying normally don't do this but here's a hot take roh had better builds to their pay-per-views when they didn't have a weekly show how the hell is that even possible i don't know you know there's something to that and that thanks I think, reg yes thank you so much for mm. and also the 11 11 i'm just like a little bit of a hippie so i appreciate mm -hmm. you chiming in with 11 dollars and 11 cents um i RO, this iteration of ROH has been best when it hasn't been week by week produced yeah. cinema. Yeah. That was for you. Um, no. <laughs> meaning that, like, we've had weekly episodic television, but the times where they've had to plan out eight weeks in advance, 
kind of similar to what this chat is saying. Like if you are forced to think ahead because the only thing you're building to is a pay-per-view, like maybe it's just way too much to have this many weekly episodic wrestling shows on mm -hmm. under the same umbrella. If there's more support that needs to happen, I was rooting for Delirious to get signed because I thought he was doing such a good job, but he's killing it over in, in Impact resigning there. But like something just feels like it's not being tended to with care in ROH. And I said it last week and I'll say it again. This was the most logical pro wrestling mm -hmm. brand in America on television. Like, and so for that to fall off to a gap where we're having a six man mayhem, 25 grand, <laughs> whatever. The Silly. And, and it was a pretty good match. But yeah. Like, really good match. For the product that had standings and like, it just crystal clear stuff. I'm, it's really crazy because AEW has so many ring of honor pieces there's so many people that are back there that could be helping there's so many people that know the history there's so many people that were a part of the history of ring of honor that are just willy-nilly walking around a, a fightful select story about a returning uh person that was in the building yesterday that would probably be a huge help to what's going on in ring of honor uh and a bunch of other legends like jerry Lane i don't know and, some and, people and, maybe that you interviewed on ask rhapsody I'm some, telling some you, heroes over you know there? what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a lot of pieces to connect this together. But I think this is really just uh, the the most overwhelming we hear of Tony Khan. Like this shows right here that like he's doing he's doing dynamite. He's doing rampage. He's doing collision and ring of honors there, too. And he's like, well, I got a book. 16 weeks worth of TV or something. And what am I supposed to do when I got all this other stuff going on? So ring of honor. It does feel like Rampage got better and ROH yes. got worse. Yes, and Rampage is great. Whoever's booking that, great job. Doing good. Um, but I will say, too, like, to your point, that's just the weekly episodic television you named. Yeah. There's, like, this guy is dealing with everything from <laughs> how many arms do I have to twist and legs do I have to break to get final countdown rights to... All yeah, that in, was just TV, out. Kate. We're not even talking about football. We're not talking about, like, we're not even yeah. getting into half the stuff. And the other responsibilities as, as the owner of the company, right? We're talking <laughs> about just booking weekly episodic television hours. Mm -hmm. Never mind, like, managing all the stakeholders that are involved in this stuff. And you're right. He's got a football team and a <laughs> soccer club and all these things. So... He's a little maniac, and I love and respect him for it. But so, spread it, oh, big please, dog. You got a bunch of people that could help you back there. Just be like, here, you t have fun with this, and it'll Your be dope. ROH cheerleaders are begging you. Just pass up, just a pass little bit. Pass me the book, dude. I'll take it. I, I could write you a little something. Reg gets the pencil. We could do. I listen. We did Mad Libs on here. We could do like a. <laughs> no, R don't R watch that. If, if if that anything from our resume, do not watch that. Stay away <laughs> from that clip. That. Oh, please. We're don't good. Use that. We're good. Just the 420 episode. You can watch Cresta's half. Amazing. Yeah, but Cresta was great. No, Cresta. no, no. Don't also don't watch that because you're gonna get her instead of me. To watch my part. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see Cresta and be like, wow, she's great. Let's get her. <laughs> touche, touche. Yeah. Don't actually I love Cresta, but don't watch her because she's yeah, don't watch her. She's she's better than she's me. She's great. Yeah. Anytime she's on camera, she's just taking yeah, everything. Yeah, she's stealing it. So, so yeah. So Avoid Cresta, except for mm -hmm. the impact side. So yeah. um, we are the two biggest cheerleaders of our wage that you could ever have. We are rooting for this product, but it's our job to to pass along criticisms like this. And we have to the stinkiest part. But mm -hmm. we do start off with a match that was for Reg. We get Commander with Alex Abrahantes for some reason, uh, defeating Gringo Loco. <laughs> He's a Mexican I, wrestler, Kate. What do you mean? <laughs> that what you just said is exactly what I mean. Um, <laughs> we got a really, really nice springboard Phoenix splash for the win here. Uh, I don't like to give Joel Pearl credit because I'm committed to bits, but he has kind of said like, "How many like my Kingo Komandere, yeah. <laughs> Loco, 
-hmm. permutations of matches are we going to get? Mm -hmm. uh, and it is feeling like we're teetering in that same way that, like, I don't know if you know this, Reg, we've seen Brian Cage and Willie Mack a time or two. It's kind nah. of becoming that vibe where it's like, I've seen this like eight times. And At I'm the end of that 25,000 K match, I was like, man, that's crazy. I've never seen Willie Mack and Brian Cage go at it before. I can't believe they would end the match like this. It's so fresh. It was Finally sharing the <laughs> ring together, Willie Mack and Brian Cage. I can't even be that mad at it, though, because it's always good. And I feel like they always find a way to make it different. But in the same way, I feel like we're teetering on oversaturation of this a little bit. Mm -hmm. However, you are the spot for God. This was a this was a ton of fun at what they do. Uh, something that strikes me about Commander is even the really basic stuff is so explosive when he mm -hmm. what he does, which isn't the case with every luchador. I think Ray Phoenix is like that a lot too. Where just like an just an arm drag today looked mm -hmm. so acrobatic and cool. Um, that really stood out for for me in this match tonight. Uh, this match had no stakes. It didn't mean anything. <laughs> if Alex Abrahantes was going to just be managing other luchadors, help put the tag team titles on other luchadors and have Alex Abrahantes down there with them. What did you think of our match as you are the spot food king? Okay. You know, there's a lot of complaints here. I started off hot. There's a lot of things. I'm like, what's going on here? But if you want to get me into a show, this is how you start the show. Uh, your complaint about them, uh, the Joel Pearl, don't care. Put them in here again. I like to see Vikingo and Commander next week against each other. Then after that, the three of them against each other. Just every time they're together, it's electric. I like to think of like, if you're watching like WCW Nitro in like 96, 97, it'd be like Rey Mysterio would wrestle Psychosis or La Parca or uh, Super Kalo like all the time. You see these guys wrestle. 10, 20 times a year, but they would all be awesome and they would get the crowd every time. Matches like that are kind of more for the live crowd because you have to bring them back some way. When you're giving us this bullshit, you have to bring them back with the crazy match full of spots. This one was great. Uh, Gringo Loco was amazing on the base. The arm drags that uh, Commander was hidden in this were crazy. The He did a running, jumping up, Hurricane Rana, Gringo Loco was standing on the ropes. All kind of wild stuff. Just great action, exactly what you would expect for these guys and how you would want to start the show. The problem with this Ring of Honor thing, Kate, is we could come on here every time, but most of the time you could still go through all of our shows and we'd be like, but that was a really good match or there was a good match here, but that was a good match. And I think that's where it ends up because it's like, damn, there's nothing really going on here, but they are giving us good matches. And it's like, is that enough? It is not. Some of that reviews NXT, I can tell you, great matches just aren't enough to sustain exactly. everything. But I was actually going to make the same point. We kind of let in with some of our criticisms and complaints about what's going on. But the things that always deliver are awesome in-ring mm -hmm. and commentary. And I feel commentary like... Commentary is always phenomenal. God, and they... Nights like tonight, you really need it. Like, they added so much here. Um so there is that you are getting some of the best wrestlers in the world doing what they do. You're getting really good commentary and the pacing, especially for an hour and a half show, this was a breeze, it was. but like it, it does make a really big difference when you are not getting a slog of promos in between things. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a bunch of meaningless matches, if you then put a bunch of meaningless promos in those meaningless matches, Oh man, don't do that to us. It gets, it gets to be kind of, uh, it starts to feel like homework where this never really yes. gets into that territory because yes. the in rings always interesting. For sure. I don't want this to feel like homework just because I have a podcast afterwards, you guys just like <laughs> give us something to care about. Uh, <laughs> I go, I gotta sit through this show of great wrestling. Oh, it's crazy. Darn it. <laughs> People like don't realize like I I take notes I have to um, yes. I feel like it's important to be responsible especially on the hosting side of this and mm -hmm. I got ADD who's in my head and out the other like and I'm not exactly I don't have the Will Washington gene of oh I remember in 2002 when these guys were breathing in the exact same corners that they and are now you... in the city like I'm not that I'm not that fan How do you remember what happened in match three on match 19 You know Yeah <laughs> Yeah. Especially Without when there's notes. like not a story in this building. <laughs> uh, so I, it's, 
I we said homework. Like I actually look like there's homework. I've got like my computer notes and things <laughs> I wrote down. I'm like such a freaking square with my wrestling notes. But mm-hmm. uh, this is the way you start this off, right? Like, and especially for the live experience, you get that hour of wrestling beforehand. You get that hour of yep. wrestling after. Sometimes you get wrestling from a different city or state or country. Yeah. In some cases. <laughs> but when you're there live, what? these types of matches can do to grab a crowd is is something that's really important for that to translate to the broadcast. So mm-hmm. I think it's it's good if this was the order that it was filmed in, this is a smart way to to start things off because you're immediately going to grab in the attention of this filtering in crowd. Right. So good stuff. And we move on to, I think I said it last week, like I'm through my tecker phase. I'm on to my dancer phase. Daniel Garcia, I kind of get a little bit of both. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm loving, I love wrestler Daniel Garcia, who also dances. Like, it's mm-hmm. just a really, really, really fun thing. So silly. I think we're going away from the Jericho Appreciation Society, finally. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought this match was a ton of fun. I thought Christopher yeah. Daniels actually looked really good in this, too. Like, his, yeah. uh, he had a thunder bomb, I think, in here at one point, mm-hmm. and a nice sequence of offense. But this goes the way that you would expect. You get Daniel Garcia... Uh, hitting a gut buster to score the win Mm -hmm. looked great um i loved ian was like what is he dancing for you think dancing's Mm -hmm. gonna beat shibata (laughs) and i countered him and i tweeted at ian rickabody and i said hold on excellent commentator who was rapping to willow's theme are you allowed to have fun are you allowed to bop but daniel garcia is not and he made the point if you're gonna beat shibata you can't be dancing around in there which just automatically made me want Shibata, Daniel Garcia, dance off. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to get it. But I'm also like, Ian could be lying because nobody has tried that strategy against Shibata. Like, all the other strategies haven't worked. Like, he's it come against him as strong style, come against him as high flying, come against him as that. You get your face smashed in. Maybe dancing will catch him off guard, and then you can roll him up really quick. Might be a good strategy. There's only one way to find out. Gotta see it. We got to see Danny Garcia and Shibata in the ring. Danny Garcia, July twenty first, Trenton, New Jersey, Death Before Dishonor. Book it. Sure, maybe unless Shibata's <laughs> in the G one or something. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> yes, yes. Can you imagine yeah. Shibata's like, oh, by the way, I'm in the C block. You're like, wait, what the fuck? right? You're like, <laughs> wait, I don't. No, I don't. You can't. <laughs> it's crazy. I, it fun. wouldn't be the craziest thing at this point. He's he's pretty active out here. But yeah, super fun match. First of all, shout out to Christopher Daniels, whose eye finally healed up after yeah. what felt like a year. I was like, is this guy's eyes permanent? Was it a gimmick? I don't know what was going on. Finally cleared up. That was wild. Thought that his friends, the Young Bucks blinded him or messed up his eye forever so super cool that that cleared up and yeah this was a fun match daniel garcia has been kind of just back in ring of honor doing his thing maybe headed towards pure title status they didn't really talk about it much today it's more just focused on him being a super entertaining wrestler the dance is great at the end of it he danced with aubrey to get her out of the ring phenomenal stuff phenomenal work i think he's uh transcended what people kind of expected of Daniel Garcia in the beginning, just with the little dance. It just blows my mind that like one little thing could like change your whole trajectory of where, where people think you're supposed to go. Like people probably thought something totally different of Daniel Garcia a year ago, starts doing this dance. His dance is super over. He's doing it on top of people at this point. It's just wild. Shout out to Daniel Garcia. He's super cool. Hopefully he does get that shot against Shibata because he deserves it. Agreed. The dance. Because nobody else is a contender. Because <laughs> we don't have pure standings anymore. Oh, Jesus. But the dance with Aubrey was great. He even tweeted, "Like, can this be the new code of honor?" <laughs> so great. But to your point, I think there were a lot of people that this whole run really caught off guard, myself included, because we mm. we knew Daniel Garcia was one of like the hottest prospects on the Indies. We knew he was one of these guys who always looks like he's trying to win a match. Always is like laying stuff in he's Mm -hmm. always going to look like a vicious competitive wrestler and he's always very believable as a pro wrestler not everybody knew about his sense of humor and this other side of him and how great he is with this piece of things i feel like it's gone on too long but i think it is really fun when a wrestler adds layers like this so that you get to see more dimensions of them like Mm -hmm. the badass part of him was never going anywhere so to add this in 
dance away, Danny Garcia. Yeah, it, exactly like you're saying. He's going to be the great wrestler, and he's going to continue to be an even better wrestler. In 10 years, he's going to be crazy and amazing. We're going to look back and be like, damn, what a career. But like, just adding that little extra element to get more people to care than than would have previously just off him being a Techers boy like you usually like. It's just a great addition for him. And I hope it ends up being something more in AEW too now that he's going to potentially be away from like damn Jericho Vortex. Very excited about it. Uh, another mind-boggling thing is that he's 24. Yeah. Like these babies, man. 24. Like. I hate him, him. him and Kyle Fletcher are the same age and they're two of the best pro wrestlers in the world already. And I, hate like it, I hate both of them. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's gross as someone who's in their mid thirties. Like yep. it's gross. Stop. Mm -hmm. Um, stop progressing right now. <laughs> no, even worse is like they played this great video for Nick Wayne yesterday, just about to turn 18. I'm like, he's that good. And he's 18. I hate him. He's yeah. worse. It, yeah. And just like, if you were born in the two thousands, we got heat. You know that just I mean? sounds That's crazy. It. Anytime somebody says, oh, I was born in 2003, I'm like, that, what do you mean? No, no, no you, you weren't. weren't. <laughs> if I can remember it vividly, no, you were not. You weren't there. You, you weren't born in 2003. I was doing stuff in 2003. What do you mean? Come on. Yeah, I was like eyeing my no, license and stuff. You know what I mean? Like I was in that <laughs> mode, but. Maybe that's why I'm so cranky about ROH today. Maybe I'm that's just a why. cranky old woman at this point, but I was not for this match. Uh, I knew I was sour when my first thought of this next match was like, oh, cool. A trio that wrestles as a tag team all the time versus a trio that wrestles as a tag team sometimes with mm. no stakes. Mm. I was just out on this. Um, and it was a good match, but I just, who are you and in what division do you wrestle and for what reasons is some pretty fundamental shit, Reg. <laughs> we Seems weren't getting easy. any of it yeah. here. Mm -hmm. We get Leona and Khan uh, hitting that, that tandem slam that they do to to tie things up here. But, uh, I mean, a perfectly suitable story. I love seeing Prince Nana. Um, Andretti and Darius work fine together, but it does mm -hmm. feel like they're just stalling until Dante comes back, essentially. Mm -hmm. AR Fox is with them sometimes. AR Fox is not with them sometimes. Sometimes mm -hmm. I have AR Fox. Sometimes I do not. <laughs> uh, it's like a Dr. Seuss novel gone into bad booking. I'm not here for it. Sometimes you feel like a fox. Sometimes you don't. That's <laughs> an AR Fox. Um, I think some cool things are going to happen here eventually. Uh, I think that they're putting a, an emphasis on the embassy. They've been for a while on the Ring of Honor program, which I think is kind of cool. You know, uh, Brian Cage gets a lot of emphasis on this show. And... The other guys have been doing their thing, too. So it was great to see them in that capacity. But again, they have belts and don't nobody try to get them at this point. What's going on here? Like, who's going to challenge them at the pay-per-view? Nobody's even in contention. They're going to put together a team at the last minute. And it's going to be like, it's going to be a good match. But it's like, you could have been building for it and add a little bit more to it. The only thing I can think is that, and I can't imagine Dante's ready to come back this quickly, but like yeah he can't be right but like i was like unless that's the story they're building of like that that could work but unless maybe ar fox comes back in and this is our trip i don't know i don't know what the six man stuff is but it's not it isn't a thing that's kind of it's the problem that we have yeah. mm -hmm. um it's a bummer but the the match was perfectly suitable i'm, mm -hmm. I'm not like super in on Action Andretti's really good at what he does. I don't know if we've tapped into what makes him great yet, if that mm. makes sense. Like, there's a really big gap between a, a really good wrestler and a great wrestler, in, in my mind. And the great part is that, like, that unrepeatable thing that you tap into. And I don't think he's found that unrepeatable thing that you tap into. I think he'll yeah. get there, and he doesn't need to be there right now. He's no. another person that was probably born in the aughts. Gross. Mm. Um, but... It's just one of those things that in a match that doesn't matter with no story to it, that's a barrier for me to get like more more into it in a sense. Yeah, he he is just kind of a flipper guy. I mean, I like flipper guys, but it's just not really. If there's like, oh, he beat Chris Jericho, we can't ride that forever. That's like not 
that's not a character. Like we need something else to kind of latch onto. No, and now he's just kind of drop that story, didn't we? Like, <laughs> he's just like this guy's uh, getting me the best of me. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, cool. Huh? Well, all I right. don't care. Just quit talking about it at this point. And now he's just kind of like the top flight's friend. And they didn't really establish anything beyond that of like, oh, he's here. I like him. He flips too. Let's do this while my brother's gone. And we just need a little bit something more as the rest of the it's getting, starting to sound like a broken record at this point. <laughs> You're right. But that's they're giving us a broken record. I just want to play my vinyls, man. But Doc Mueller chiming in saying red shooting AR Fox until all my joy killed me. Look. We're here to sports entertain, if anything. Mm -hmm. I know it doesn't seem that way because Reg is a hater. But you know who else is a hater and a sports entertainer? Daniel Garcia. So Facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big facts. Big hater. Huge hater. Huge hater. I've been hated on personally by this man. <laughs> Unbelievable. He's the best. But the yeah. worst. But kind of the best. Yeah. Um, a nice near fall in here that I did want to call out was... There was a really nice 450 splash where Leona got the the knees up and that looked mm. really, really good. I kind of bit at it, but that was the only like moment of suspense that was yeah. nice for me. <sighs> Just a cool tag match. And then we move Another on to something cool that has a story and it lasts for like eight seconds. I don't know what else to like. <laughs> what are we doing? Y'all are mixing this know. order of how these matches Anna. should go up. <laughs> now, look. Stu Grayson has a really great spitting Uranagi, and it yeah. should basically murder people. But mm. we have the righteous come down, and that's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Righteous laughs> they start came. with the code of honor, which I really liked. Uh, but Grayson hits the spitting Uranagi. They didn't even um, get rid of their like jackets, the rest of right. their ring gear in this, which. I actually love squashes that go that way. Like when MJF mm -hmm. squashes someone and doesn't even take his, the gum out of his mouth. Like mm -hmm. I love that like level of dominance, but they kind of hit their, their triple team slam, which was great. Uh, I, I still love that Stu is not wearing all white, even though it seems like he's like kind of in on this. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just like one of the very few stories that they have brewing right now. So I wanted to see more of it, but it would also make sense that that would tie up on the go home episode, right? So I understand the cadence there, but in the sea of matches that were generally meaningless tonight, it would have been <laughs> nice to have seen something more from this. But I'm loving this story. It's one of my favorite stories in all of wrestling. So glad it's it's continuing in the direction that it is. But I don't have a lot to say on the match because it was two mm. moves. <laughs> you know, anytime uh, that the announcers do that Excalibur style announcing of the opponents, that what kind of squash match is going to be like? And they're like, you this guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we know what this is about to be. They're about to get squashed. It's just because the uh, only thing, unfortunate is like they passed on what the embassy has been doing in this trio's matches to the righteous. Like we've been seeing this for weeks and weeks and weeks with Brian Cage and Khan and Toa over here. And now they're switching it over to them. It's like, no, that's not what we want to see. We don't want to see just trio squashes all the time. We actually want to see these trios matches. So like, let's do it. That is the best story that you're telling. One of the best stories next to what you're saying, telling with Athena. Great story that you're telling here on the show. Let's add a, one more little element on it on the way up. But you know, I'm with you. And because we don't believe in job or entrances and Luis is great at this, uh, we will also mention that the other trio that we had on television is Rip Impact, mm -hmm. Cray Martin and Zach with a K, Patterson. Uh, always try to give people their shout outs because usually their capabilities are above and beyond what you see in a, a two move squash. So uh, since this is basically AEW Dark, you might as well go check out the independent talent that's on it. Yes. <laughs> Louis pointing out that Dutch didn't even do his weird tongue thing. I'm Good. okay with taking a week off from the weird yeah, tongue thing. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. it's weird. If, if the squashes means we won't have to see it, like maybe some more squashes. Maybe if you maybe sprinkle a few a few more squashes in there because mm -hmm. it makes me makes me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. Very uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, we get Big Bill and Lee Moriarty in an interview defeating the and a match quickly defeating the boys, Brandon Tate and Brent Tate. This was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, did Nick Camarado give Big Bill his lollipop? That's what I need to know. I need to know. Uh, like, Big boys do like to share. 
It's true. It's mm-hmm. true. So I need to, I feel like that should maybe be a match for the pay-per-view because it's more of a mm-hmm. story than they're telling right now. I mean, Nick <laughs> you just made up the story. Look at that. That's it. I created one. <laughs> I created one out of thin air. But Big Bill continuing to show personality. Uh, mm-hmm. Lee Moriarty continuing to be great. And I thought there was a lot of fun things to be had in this match. Um, Moriarty winning with the leg Larry ultimately on Brent. Mm-hmm. I love... I, I love when any wrestler can finish you in a few different ways and that when that arsenal is a wide variety of things. A leg lariat is very different from the border city stretch, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, it makes it more suspenseful because it feels like the pinfall can happen at any time because it's mm-hmm. happening with a variety of moves that all feel different from each other. So it's right. not even like this is a submission and this is a submission and this is a submission. It's like, nah, one's a lariat, one's a submission. Like there's... Uh, a really deep toolbox that uh, Lee Moriarty can pull from to beat you. And I love to mm-hmm. see that uh, classic big bill doing big bit man stuff in this perfectly mm-hmm. fine. I've got no problem with it. I do like this duo. I kind of selfishly like Lee Moriarty's ceiling is just so high and I don't feel mm-hmm. like big bill is holding him back in any way, but I do feel like, I, I want to just make sure that this guy is on like a super high reaching trajectory because he's just a really, really special wrestler. Like he's mm-hmm. so, so good. And again, I think this is working, uh, but Lee's just incredible. And I, I want to make, I, I just hope his potential gets actualized in, in all of this. Um, what were your thoughts on the match that we got here today and the little interview we got beforehand? I I thought the promo was very strong. I liked it a little bit better than the match. Actually, one of the strongest parts of the show, uh, Big Bill being like the boys. You're not Lee's boy. You're not my boy. And you better not be her boy. Was probably my favorite <laughs> line. Of it. Anyway, you better not be her boy. Well, hold on. Being like, hey, better you better not. watch out, bro. I don't care what kind of boys you're <laughs> showing. A lot of personality. Lee was talking about picking money up off like the strip club floor or something. He had some <laughs> nice bar in there. I was like, these guys are really cool together, bringing out more of Lee's personality. I thought the whole thing of Lee getting with Stokely and then them getting all together now leading to them is really great. I think Lee has so much time to kind of develop, like we talked about the previous wrestlers, that this is good for him at this point because he could kind of get here. learn. They can both kind of learn some new things together. And then eventually they can both break off and, and get some, some gold. Because I think that big bill has a really high ceiling at this point. Honestly, I think the way that he's kind of taking on the roles that he's been giving, he's been given like since coming into a W has kind of showed everybody what an asset he is. And I, I'm on the big bill train. I'm not going to lie about it. Wow. Well, all right. Yeah. See, I'm I'm gradually getting more about in each week, but uh, so I still got a little ways to go. Mm-hmm. I, I think this is working, but for me to think it's the best option for Lee Moriarty right now, still a little bit of work to do. But mm-hmm. I just I've been in on Lee Moriarty for a real long time, yeah. so it's that's why it's just you just want the best for Lee. That's okay. I do, yeah. I do. I love that guy. This very well may be it. So mm-hmm. I will let it play out, as the mm-hmm. kids say. And if you are looking to let your impact post show play out. You can catch that on the back end of this. We're a little over halfway through the ROH show. They'll be on between like 10.05 and 10.10 to review impacts. There's a lot of cool stuff going on over there. You got all yeah. this and Leo Rush tagging together. You've got some really, uh, some stuff that's, that's creating some buzz with uh, Killer Kelly and, and some tension some, <laughs> some Those stare down some naughty insinuations that has the whew, mm-hmm. has the internet a talking but mm-hmm. stay tuned for your impact post show there's a lot of good programming coming along the way for them i can't wait they're coming to philly for um multiverse and that's on oh, the sweet. back of the all-stars and new japan junior so i'm gonna oh. try to i was already going to the new japan junior that's so the hot they're back-to-back days <laughs> They are back to back days. And so I think we're going to get some really, really fun crossovers from that. So nice. That's going to yeah. be a great, great weekend double shot of pro wrestling that all Japan and New Japan, the, the, the junior show is going to be insane. Yeah. And I'm guessing what the more New Japan stuff they announced for the Impact show is going to be incredible. So good times out there. It's I'm a jealous. Good time in wrestling, man. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. If they could just get our beloved ROH back on track, but <laughs> there it is. Any, if there's anybody that can, 
You know who it is. It's our girl, Athena, man. Ugh. Shay Monster saying, Athena versus Willow on collision. Willow loses again, and there's less sense for her to get the ROH pay-per-view match. CK shouldn't have Athena lose either. Yeesh. Uh, yeah. Tough call, huh? It's tough because anytime a tournament's involved, like people that you really like are going to take L's. That's just yes. like, this is the way it's it's going to go. Because a tournament um, loss isn't like a regular loss. It's different. There's something about yeah, it. There's, I feel like usually you're rooting for really good matches and pairing logical matchups, right? Like mm -hmm. I would have loved Roddy Strong to have one, but like it's going to be Samoa Joe and Punk. Like yes. things like that. And you're continuing storylines between the outcasts and the homegrowns. Would love for them to announce a women's blood and guts because that feels kind of stuck in the mud right now. If there's mm -hmm. going to be some blow off to this angle, that would be neat. I don't know if the Jamie Hader injury is playing into it. Feels like that hasn't been progressing necessarily, but it is tough. It's like you have such limited space, especially with the way that they're choosing to to book women's wrestling on the AEW main roster right now. Mm -hmm. And Willow is like hot, hot, hot. And she just dropped her New Japan Strong title. Man, hot, hot, hot. She yeah, did. I mean, Shane Monster might have told the story, though, because in reverse, though, if Willow gets the win over Athena at the Owen on Collision, then that tells the story of this is Athena's first loss, and I think they said 29 matches. Or She said, yeah. and uh, plug tomorrow at noon Eastern a.m. P uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, Athena is in an interview with the boys of Graf City, Righteous Reg, and Philip Hell Lindsay. yeah. Here on the Fightful channel, we talked a lot about Ring of Honor, her aspirations. Very great interview. But yeah, if Willow gets the victory over her, gives her her first loss in a long time, then they could tell the story that she didn't beat her for the championship. But this has earned her another title match, and then they could be the match at Death Before Dishonor. We get uh, Athena versus Willow 3. And oh, yeah. maybe Willow gets the victory because Willow's not the New Japan strong women's champion anymore. But also on the other end, Athena is on this insane run. And after talking to her in this interview that you guys should take check out in the morning, I never want her to lose. So I don't know. <laughs> I think the move is to have Willow win to set up that return shot. Mm -hmm. um, and... It just makes sense because Ruby's on the other side, right? So you got yes, Ruby and Willow. Exactly. I think there you that's go. the logical way to go with it. But mm -hmm. I I can't wait for that because I think Athena's going to lose her fucking mind and it's going to be delicious. Like Another that's story, really Dan. Tells, Kate got some pen and paper over there or some. She's getting down today with these stories. She's telling you, a lot I of stories. I got my, my homework notes all over the place mm -hmm. with this. I but I, I think that's also good because you're having Athena snap in like a – a high profile spot to a tournament on the main roster. Like, yes. I, I think there's a lot of really good things that could happen there. Like she's not used like to being on TV like this. She's been used to the ring of honor format. It's a different live crowd. It's all kind of different stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, and just so much of like, why is Willow so over when I'm the champion that's been winning and I have mm -hmm. 29 title defenses in my back pocket. She should beat the ever living crap out of Willow. Yeah. after she loses and in, in yes. my opinion if i was booking it that's what i'm doing but uh i'm intrigued to, i'm intrigued to see what goes that way i'm intrigued to see what goes that way and it's a non-title loss like yeah that's kind of okay that's I'm kind in. of what the, the point <laughs> mm -hmm. so good stuff though i'm i'm looking forward to what we might get in the next phase for athena very much so mm -hmm. very much so but in this match We've got a proving ground match that lasts not the ground was not, not too long. Yeah. We're very uncertain about the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we yeah. got Salusia Sparks, <laughs> who is from an, an era of Ring of Honor that I don't I don't actually remember seeing her. I don't know if that was Yeah, was they were pumping her up and I was like, I don't re I don't remember where this is from. But they seem pretty excited on commentary about it. They were, but they're also really good at their job. So I yeah. don't know if there was a little bit of maybe like over amplifying the story but it's cool that they were telling us to get bought in on her i thought i thought yeah. she looked good but she was here to do the job of getting her ass kicked by athena she did very well beautiful gal mm -hmm. got some offense in looked all right uh but we get athena drilling sparks in the corner with a forearm before mm -hmm. hitting a knockout elbow to the for the win Everything I said about Lee Moriarty is true times 10 with Athena. She could beat you like this. She could beat you with the O-Face. She can yep. 
make you pass out. Like there's mm -hmm. so many really, 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 really great things happening here. This just continues on. Uh, I kind of mentioned my gripe that these matches for the ladies have gotten very short, but mm -hmm. they do serve the story in both situations. So I can't be too yeah. mad at it because it doesn't feel like they're certainly not cutting TV time at ring of honor. We'll no. put it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> they're not like, Oh, we got to keep our minutes uh, right. tabulated here. But what did you think of what we got out of this tonight? It's, it's interesting with Athena because the story that they've been telling is they can, they've continued to tell it, but like, and then it's like match placement. Like why did they place this match at this point when she's the yeah. champion? You know what I mean? Like, I they they have we've seen multiple episodes where she's kind of been in the middle around lingering with the with the belt and the proven ground matches, but I feel like in this case with the low stakes is like put her in later in the show or add some extra emphasis. It just felt like another match of like the best in the ROH MVP is also here, you guys. I don't want also here, you guys. I want to be like the ROH MVP is here. Fireworks and pyro and, and all kinds of stuff is happening. Like we need to be making it an emphasis that it's Athena. She's on this long run. She's incredible. She's the best wrestler we have here, not just match number five or whatever this is, you know. And there were stakes. Like I know we've seen a lot of proving ground matches, but that's a that should feel like a big deal because a not lot a of fake things... one like last week, remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Just when I thought the wounds were healing. <laughs> I know how to it's trigger you. Ground. You do. Time. You know, mm -hmm. at like mm -hmm. three in the morning, it's just gonna be like needling in my head. Yep. And I'm gonna be like, Rah, Claudio. You know? They knew who to who to make do it though. They're like, damn, she really likes Claudio though, so she's not gonna be that upset, but she's still gonna be upset because it's the way that he explains it is upset. such bullshit. Yeah, it made me more upset because I was like, <laughs> that's not this guy. This guy would never do that rude of them <laughs> rude of them just call it a contendership match but this was another thing that felt very not in the roh identity but it ended mm -hmm. up being all right you yeah. got tony niece versus jd drake tony niece is trying to get you to buy into this group training god bless him he has an actual app for individual training he does some fitness stuff on the side i have friends that have done it they speak very oh, highly this is of real it. This is real. Not, oh. He doesn't make audiences stand up and do exercises, to my yeah. knowledge, but he does have a training business on the side, and my friends oh. have said it's worth the money. They lost a lot of oh, weight okay. on it. So there you go. Good for Tony's. Oh. They don't have as many abs as him yet, but I'm sure they're working towards it. Well, that takes some time. Yeah. <laughs> J.D. Drake said, uh, I'm going to whoop your ass. And I was like, yep. I believe you. I like it. But then we get Mark Briscoe coming to the ring with a microphone and saying that after talking with Tony Khan, Briscoe has been added to this match and they make it a three-way dance. Ian Riccoboni jumped the gun on commentary here saying that he was the third man in the match before Briscoe introduced himself. Yep. Got a little awkward. I'm going to assume that's a weird editing thing because Ian Riccoboni does not miss. All yeah, right. I didn't really understand because they, they had the graphic that was one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is nice. And then like Mark Briscoe starts coming out and Ian's like, here he is, the third member of this match. I'm like, how? <laughs> like wait a minute i mean last week he didn't know what city he was in via the editing so i guess this is it's a lot <laughs> going on i can't even blame him but boy oh boy we get uh kind of uh your briscoe classics we get yes. him hitting the froggy bow at the end here and he's trying to steal the pin which was great like very clever well situated in there but briscoe cutting him off hitting that jay driller on nice for the win i tweeted this and i'll say it on here Watching the J Driller, I was like, I feel confident in my take about the the all of the Tiger Driver <laughs> discourse. I was like, I think so wrestlers dumb. get dropped on their heads way more often than people realize. And when people, I saw the J Driller tonight, I was like, I was correct about that. People <laughs> mark out for uh, German suplexes, and they happen in like every match. And like the really good ones are people landing on their head. <laughs> yeah, especially I also think. Um, if you watch AEW more than you watch New Japan and you don't watch, if you haven't watched a lot yes. of New Japan, people land on their heads all the time in New oh. Japan. <laughs> like so much all more. All the time. Abushi, when we've seen some Abushi spots where we're like, dude, stop. Don't do that. Why are you doing that in the ring? We're scared for your health. So it's Japanese like Japanese wrestling hits different. I've I've been going into the archives because New Japan's on such a heater. I was like, I'm gonna go back and watch old stuff. Let me get some mm -hmm. some strong style in. I'm watching Masawa matches like this. Yes. Yeah. 
It's insane. The legendary Kabashi, Kawada, they were Ooh. dropping each other on the, their necks were like this. <laughs> like, dude, they, it was disgusting. Crazy stuff. Doing suplexes off aprons onto the floor. Like, this is God. like walk in the park for these guys. So I didn't know because I was late to the game in wrestling in general. I did not know the four pillars of heaven was a thing before mm. the four pillars in AEW. Like yeah. I just didn't know that was an era that everything existed. is borrowed. Nothing's original in pro wrestling. It's extremely true. So when I found yeah. out about it, I was like, well, now I have to go watch all of it as much as yeah. I possibly can. If you don't like bumps like that, do not go and watch these matches. Do not. I <laughs> but when I saw this Jay Driller tonight, I was like, I was but like, yes, exactly to your point. People get dropped <laughs> on their head all the time. At least at minimum one a show. At minimum. There's more like four or five a show. And think of how many shows there are. Come on, dude. There's a lot. And I loved what Kenny Omega said about it. And I, I can't remember who the interview was with, but he was like, Y'all couldn't believe that someone kicked out after it. So it mm. wasn't like a pointless one. I saw so much of that of like, um, is the match really worse off without it? And I kind of liked getting mm -hmm. Omega's defense there of like, well, yeah, because you couldn't believe someone kicked out of it. It's crazy. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it served the purpose of the match. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this match at all. <laughs> but watching this Jay Driller, I was like, damn, Mark. <laughs> damn, yeah. Moral of the story, sick Jay Driller. <laughs> yeah. I thought this match was a lot more fun than it had ever, any right to be. Nice. Hitting a sunset flip power bomb in this looked really great. I think JD Drake and Tony Nice, for how different of wrestlers they are, had some really nice chemistry together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though this was kind of shoehorned and like the shoehorning is what doesn't feel ROH to me in this, but yeah. the the match itself, I mean, my goodness, like what do you what do you even say? This was this was a blast. This was fun. Mm -hmm. Three really fun wrestlers. Three guys that. Uh, are great against people and so to see all of them in the ring against each other is awesome mark briscoe uh the in this show things change for him very drastically from this match until the end of the show so i guess they were foreshadowing what was about to happen but beyond that this was just a really fun triple threat match jd drake i love watching him wrestle i think he needs more we talked about it multiple times on here him and anthony henry henry as the workhorseman Great tag team, but JD just alone when he does that, he's on the outside of the ring and he does the bounces them off the ropes and hits them the big clobber thing. It's just so great, such oh. a great versatile kind of old school, but a lot of new school uh, type big man. Great talent and Tony Nice, the he's really living the gimmick here, as Kate said. She has a couple <laughs> of friends that have gotten down with it. So yeah, yeah, all these guys are really cool. And like I said, the Mark Briscoe thing. Really, the trajectory really changed of what we went into the show thinking he was going to do. Yes, it did. And we're going to talk about that shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I'm, I've am i been kind of underwhelmed by the AEW tag picture because I feel yeah. like they have the best division in the world, but Ooh. I feel like it's mostly been the Guns and Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. And I feel mm. like the FTR versus... The not, I was going to say, they're not even the champions. <laughs> I know. Well, those have been like the defenses for FTR. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I, I just know, you know, when you're as a wrestling fan, you're like, I just know there's money in this. There's yeah. so much money in FTR versus the workhorse. And then like, I just know it, it in is. my little wrestling brain. And I want to see it actually. And they so teased us before on this show many months ago and they never followed up. Well, they don't even have their own tag champions around on here. So why? Father, Abrahantes is just like, well, if they're not going to be around, I'll go find some other Mexican loot store. It works. We got some nice chats coming in from you kind people who know that we're not in our best ROH form today because they weren't in their best ROH form, but sending mm -hmm. us love anyway. Taylor Cannon always being fantastic, saying, hey, Kate and Reg, just wanted to send you both some positive because you all rule. Well, you rule, Thank Taylor you, Cannon. Taylor. You do rule. Thank you. Appreciate you being Super here. Super chats, Taylor's version. Mm -hmm. so that's a that's a joke you can take to Denise and all mm -hmm. the other Swifties. Me and Norma say, what's up, partners? Mm -hmm. Showing some love. I'm working late, so about to head home and watch ROH. Also, Kate, my phone battery is at 69%. Nice! nice! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love... Shout out to you, Meet Normus. The best. Hopefully these last couple of work hours are good for you, my friend. Yeah, hope you, you're going to make it through. You're going to make yeah. it. It's Thursday. We're inching closer mm -hmm. to the weekend. Let's go. 
So as you noted, Mark Briscoe's destiny to the TV title takes a <laughs> hard left. Hardest left. <laughs> but I gotta say, I hate that that's what they did, but I felt like they if you were gonna do it, this was about as well as you could have done it. Yes, like I felt agreed. like all three people involved in this absolutely nailed it. They also had Mark acknowledge that he's been talking about the TV title for the past few months. Mm -hmm. So it didn't feel like they were just <laughs> ignoring everything, <laughs> even though creative decided to ignore everything. I wish I had the 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 access to funny guy, Tony Khan, funny guy, because I would have played that right there because he's such a funny guy with this. Mark, just say that. Like, I know I've been talking about being the TV champ, but I don't want to anymore. <laughs> but I, I, it's not that he wants to be the TV champ. He's literally said it's his destiny. <laughs> Like, but Eddie Kingston was like, nah, bro, I need you to do this for me, which is also like, well, wouldn't you want to do it? So then you're going to have to, if you want to get the championship, then you're going to have to beat up Mark Briscoe. I don't know, man. Funny Just... guy, Tony Khan. Funny guy. Exactly, Tony Khan. You are a hella funny guy, though. No, no, no BS. Look. Love Tony Khan. Mm -hmm. Not his brightest moment here. Not his shining star of a moment here. But Look, they all can't be home runs, Kate. They can't all be home runs. You're going to mm -hmm. have some misses in there. But yeah. if you're going to give something that is creatively not great, <laughs> put King it on it. That's how you convince Kate that it's good. Like, just have Eddie Kingston say it. It'll be fine. <laughs> He's so good at this, Reg. He is like, really good. Jeez. Mm -hmm. He cuts his promo. I was like, man. Eddie Kingston did more with the promo after he won his New Japan Strong Open Weight title than ROH Creative has done for this picture in months. Like and Eddie Kingston had like 30 seconds. They're like, sell this in 30 seconds. Oh, no problem. Here it is. This is how you do it. <laughs> Without batting an eye. And it, it is a little bit more, I don't like it, but it's a little bit more passable to me that Eddie Kingston called him out and asked him to do this rather than Mark being like, well, I changed my mind. Eddie Kingston was like, mm -hmm. I can't be there because I'm going to be in the G1 and I need you to go beat Claudio. I need you, the heart and soul of ring of honor to go mm -hmm. get that world title because I can't be there to do the job. Um, not a strong enough buy for me, yeah. but, but pretty damn close considering what they were like, we need to get from point A to point C creatively and completely yeah. skip point B. Yes. And so I need you to go around it like, damn, like that was a that was a pretty good attempt. The, the only bigger reach that I think Eddie Kingston has pulled off was when the, the barbed wire death match didn't explode. And Eddie Kingston was like, I, I still got this. All right. I'm yeah. Tell you it was PTSD. <laughs> and that's why I react. I was like. You're the man. That was the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Eddie so Kings. That was only like, all right, Eddie, this is the only one you're not gonna sell me on, bro. I love you. You're the best, but like the barbed wire thing, no, 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 no. But yes, Eddie Kingston came in and saved this very easily just by saying a few words. And he, I like how he said that uh, because we saw the videos and the photos of him wearing Jay Briscoe's shirt to yeah. to the match. So they told a little story. They foreshadowed again for us to be like, and he's like, I wore your, your brother's shirt. I have the spirit of him out there with me. Now I need you to do this for me. Beat Claudio's ass, which is great. I mean, anytime that Eddie's going to try to get a friend to help him beat up his mortal, mortal em enemy, I'm like, I'm pretty into it. And Mark Briscoe deserves it. Uh, they probably it would have been easier if he would have just said this was his destiny first, maybe, you know. Okay. Man, pretty yeah, easier to kind of tell the story, but whatever. We we're here now. Some things up for, uh... <laughs> like you said, point A, point B, point C. We'll skip point B. We'll get from point A to point C, and we're here. And you know it's going to be a great match with Claudio and Mark Briscoe at the pay per view. At minimum, again, here you go, Ring of Honor. We're going to get a great match. So. Exactly. And I thought Mark did a really nice job because he he said, you know, I've been talking about this TV title, but like a world title shot comes calling. Am I going to answer it? Hell yeah, basically. And mm -hmm. I was glad that they didn't just wipe that away. Like right. it, they didn't assume we were stupid. And I thought Mark did a good enough job of being like, I'm not going to pass this thing up just because this I've been occupied by this other title. 
And then mm-hmm. Claudio came in and just crushed it. Yeah. Like, I, I thought, I was like, what a dickhead. That like, what was a asshole. One, of the, that, one of his best promos in a while right there. Like, he was just so menacing and rude and, like, confident and cool, though, at the same time of him just being like, do you want, I, th- I used to see you walk alongside of your brother. Now you're trying to walk in his footsteps. He, Claudio was just like, ew. And it's just like, oh, yikes, sir. <laughs> I was like, you're mean. This guy's mean. He, I love that he put over their tag history, um, mm-hmm. saying that we've had some of the most knocked down, drag out battles. Uh, there was a, a 20 match feud yeah. that they participated in. So I, I really liked him calling back to that, but I did like him being just like, it kind of felt like he was saying like, you're not your brother. Yeah. Like, it was just like this, it was, it was. Don't listen mean. to Eddie Kingston. He's lying to you. You're <laughs> not your brother. <laughs> like, <laughs> holy shit. And then he ends it by just going, you're not ready. I was like, if somebody talked to me the way that Claudio talked to him, it's one of those things where you're like, I'm so like hurt and offended, but also mm-hmm. like I kind of think you're right. Like the That's delivery the, yeah, was like so right. vicious in that way, mm-hmm. where it's like when someone else is that confident, you're like, I believe you and I hate that. <laughs> but the thing that also, if you kind of get down to it, but then you're also like, no, you're lying. He also is like a 13 time tag team champion. He's pretty ready. He's been to all the dances he could be he could go to. Like he's been in main events. He's kind of somebody that set up to beat you in an upset. So you know? Agreed. I think the the sliver there is that Jay won the world title and Mark hadn't yet. Right. Yes. Like it's it's just that little mm-hmm. piece of truth that made this yep. all work. But I man, was a jerk though. He was great. He <laughs> was so I was just like, damn, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought considering how silly the creative might have been, the way that this all got executed was a, about as much of an A plus as you could to try and overcome mm-hmm. the the obvious in all of that but right claudio what a jerk (laughs) big time i mean but you know he's been locked in a feud where he's had to change the game and he's had to be extra aggressive because people have come and had him at all angle and hitting him at super kicks around every corner so he has to be rude to every person because he thinks they're either one trying to take his championship or two trying to beat up his crew so it's like anybody who comes in my way i don't got time for this I got things to do. I got blood and guts coming up. I'm going to beat your ass. So let's go. Agreed. I I thought it was an absolute home run and fitting with the character that we've seen so far, even Mm -hmm. just in the condescending part of like that. You're not ready at the end. I was just like, oh, but that's like how the Blackpool Combat Club is. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's so consistent. I absolutely adore it. I mean, Brian Danielson told Okada he was he wasn't shit. He was just some guy, and it's like this is this is how these guys talk. They talk crazy, <laughs> even to Wheeler, right? Like when yeah. Wheeler reads to Nell, they're like, I'm, "I'm gonna have to slap him later." Uh, it's it's good shit, man. Like yeah. I'm I'm loving it. But mm-hmm. of all the matches that I felt like could have benefited from a little bit more time, I think this next one might have been it. Diamante versus Vanessa Craven, yeah. who uh, she was out for a while. I got to see mm-hmm. her at Girls Next Door. Uh, at Forbidden Door, she was oh nice, fantastic. Her and Trisha yeah. Door beat the hell out of each oh, other. Oh yeah, very very fun. She is exactly as advertised, man. She is just fantastic. I, I wish this could have gone a little bit longer because I think mm-hmm. we would have seen some really cool stuff in it. But we get Diamante continuing her win streak and hitting a wheelbarrow stunner and a code red for the win. Really 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 liked um, a where we're going with Diamante and b like. I love when Diamante is up against someone that she feels comfortable laying stuff in against. Mm-hmm. And Vanessa Craven was definitely that woman. Yeah. I hope we see more of Vanessa Craven. She's someone that you should actively seek out. I know I made mm-hmm. jokes about this being AEW Dark before, but like she's just a very special and unique talent. So go check her out. But any thoughts about this match? Yeah, this was fun for the amount of time that it was. A shout out to the homie Mike from Indeed because he's been uh, praising Vanessa Craven for a very long time about how much of a talented wrestler she is. And it was on display here. I think Diamante, yeah, they needed to tell a little bit of story because it kind of feels like if they're not doing the Willow thing, that Diamante's on the trajectory to be the number one contender and maybe get the match at the pay-per-view. And it's like they're telling the story, but just like not enough of it. Like if she, if they announce her as the the number one contender, nobody's going to be like, what? It's going to be like, yeah, but they just haven't been allowed enough 
for my taste about her being the one that's next up to beat Athena. Agreed. I think there's a lot of value in that. And I just, mm -hmm. I want to see that match so bad because they'd be yeah. the hell out of each other. That would be so much fun. So yeah. I think there, there could be a little bit more time in that of like, if it is Willow next, and then you have Athena go back to squashing some bitches, and then you build mm. up Diamante a little bit more, yep. I think you're in A-OK -okay shape. I am also not against seeing Willow versus Diamante. Yeah. That could be a whole heck of a lot of fun as well. Definitely. Speaking of fun, but pretty pointless, like a lot of our <laughs> show today, but not pointless to the, the pockets of Brian Cage, was the six-man mm. mayhem match. Uh, highlight of the intros would be Dalton Castle saying that he's going to take this 25 grand and go to a nice farmer's market with it and buy some fancy jams. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate this. What I would do with my 25k if I wanted also. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure. I'm yep. sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's the exact farm that you would be going to. The fanciest of jams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buying, <laughs> buying a lot of jams and not a different sort of plant, perhaps. Not but... any other kind of things that start with J or, or end up <laughs> as J's. I don't know. My joke almost worked, but we're going to move forward. Uh, we were picking up what you were putting yeah, yeah. over here. I like mm -hmm. Um, We did also have a chat, I think, from Doc Mueller who had said, yeah, uh oh no 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 that's later we're gonna talk about legit layla in a second but Ooh. kaden saying that dalton castle is cinema reg i know you don't like the cinema word but it's kind of hard to argue with that <laughs> dalton castle might be cinema like he's pretty great uh brian cage getting the w here uh caught i i don't love brian cage winning a roll with a roll-up but it was opportunistic and in a six-man match so i'll i'll take mm. it for now but he gets yeah, it twenty five thousand. It's fine. Like, I figured it was going to be him, but I'm like, you're a six-man champion and you're mostly on Dynamite. What are we doing? <laughs> this was just, like, a bunch of fun guys that we, like, get to have a match together. Oh, hey, there's uh, we got these six people. What should we do with them? Let's put them in a six-man mayhem match and with the stakes of $25,000. When has, in history, I've been watching wrestling for a long time, Never in my life have I ever believed one of these stupid, stupid, you're going to get money matches, even though it's usually millionaires making the matches that could definitely give up this $25,000. But you know he's not going to win $25,000. So why are you, are you even saying that? Just makes it really stupid. But no, it's the winner's that, purse, bro. Yeah, yeah, purse, purse, purse. All right, the winner's winner's winner's. But yeah, a bunch of really fun people that we like. I don't know why they did the roll-up finish either. Brian Cage has been established that he could do a lot more than that all of his moves are finishers so like just let him beat one of these guys handedly not roll up Willie Mac which is probably going to set up another Brian Cage and Willie Mac match never seen it never seen it 50 times mm -hmm. but uh this match would have been really fun if everything else on the show had stakes and made sense you know what I mean like this to me is like a fun thing to break up a a show that had stuff going on yes. but this show did not have stuff going on mm -mm. nor did it last week but we got something going on with the infantry and trish dora uh in our main event guys final super chats and humper chats call and we'll be passing it off to the impact post show crew right after this impact. we get the continually hideous uh <laughs> maria canellas coming mm -hmm. out looking just terrible saying that she knows the crowd was so excited to see her wrestle, but she's not medically cleared. And in her place announces a returning Layla Hirsch, which we absolutely love and was reported on FightfulSelect.com. The best $5 in the biz. Go get your scoops over there. Uh -huh. Very happy for Layla to be back. She also says she's going to stick around ROH in a post-match promo, which another very interesting possibility in this Athena picture. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But a, a fun match here. Uh, we ultimately end up with Maria and Mike Bennett running an interference, and Layla Hirsch catching Adora in an arm bar that looked great. And yeah. Trisha Dora, great, great, great selling. I uh, I loved her using the Fred Rossier stretch. Mm -hmm. um, that was fantastic and commentary calling that out doing a phenomenal job as they always do with stuff like that but tracing it back to that New Japan camp that she's graduated from mm -hmm. I got to talk to Trisha Dora because you're not the only one who gets to interview badass women right okay but I want all the interviews like, it was for like three minutes but still <laughs> keep an eye out for that this was a, a fun main event I liked that 
I if if Layla Hirsch hadn't returned, I would have wanted it to go the other way. But yes. continuing this as a little feud is fun because Layla Hirsch and Trisha Dora sign me up for that any Thank day you. of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of our main event here? Uh, great to see Layla Hirsch back. I heard a lot of rumblings of her being preparing to get back here. So to see her back here and in Ring of Honor is very interesting just because of the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion Athena being the champ. And if this is leading to that, or if this is leading to her and Trisha Dora, I'm all in. I think that was the most, the the the, the best part of the what happened here at the end of the show. But yeah, uh, the infantry looked great. I think in this position they got a main event. Uh, Trisha Dora being a part of the crew now just ups the ante for all everybody involved. And yeah, I kind of feel the same if if Layla Hirsch didn't join the match, I would have liked to see the result go the other way. But Layla Hirsch coming back, I think this is a great way to establish her again. And the, the little promo that she had at the end of the show is really good, too, to be like, I'm back. I'm going to see what's up over here in Ring of Honor, and I'm probably going to beat some people up. So nice to see y'all. What a little badass. Chris Mueller mm-hmm. saying, happy for legit Layla. She effing rules. I can't remember if I read that or not already, but it bears no, repeating because yeah. she does effing rule. Mm-hmm. Speaking of people that effing rule, let's bring on Cresta and Joel to turn it over to your Impact post show. Mm-hmm. Cresta, who we were saying we loved before, but we don't like bringing her on screen because uh, she is just better at everything than us. Uh, makes us makes us takes look bad. Yo, I look homeless mm-hmm. today. Not mm-hmm. today. But today. We're going to bring her on today. anyway because she's great. And we'll bring on Joel, too, because he's here, I guess. Cresta. Hi, guys. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, beautiful. How are you? Joel Pearl. No, I look no, no. Today, I know today I'm bumming it. I know, I know who runs this show. Her name's Cresta Star. It's okay. I'll take it. I'll also take everyone's salary. I'll take my asses <laughs> off this. <laughs> Why are you coming <laughs> taking everybody's money? Cresta is crazy. Um, Whoa, people I, are salaried? Can we money? go back to that part of it? Because I ain't <laughs> salaried. I went to the wrestling school of Jeff Jarrett, and oh, I will true. take no further questions right now. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know, right. There are no questions. You tell me that. I have no more questions. I get it. You got it. it. <laughs> Amen. Maybe I'm I'll learn. Okay, but I don't know. When's the, <laughs> when's, when's the impact show? When's anniversary? Next, next week. Uh, Saturday. Next Saturday. It's coming yeah. up. It's coming up quick. It's going to be then, Collision, Battle of the Belts, uh, Slammiversary, and I think Triple A has a big show that Yes, night. on the 16th, right? That's Kenny Omega and Vikingo. Yeah, yeah, that's Kenny Omega. Oh, Vikingo. my so, God. That's a sick day of wrestling. No <laughs> sleep, baby. Day. We'll, we'll do a post show. I know that. I don't know where it's going to be, but we'll do a post show. <laughs> I'll be here somewhere. That's okay. I'll There's going to be another special 10 minutes after it. So it's fine. You guys will be good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, Busy how was uh, how was another Commander versus Gringo Loco match? <laughs> that wow. was tight. I liked that on the awesome. show. So, yeah. yeah. It was great, but yeah, yeah, it was another one. This was another Ring of Honor episode that was just kind of happening. So they're not in the in the weeds. Uh-huh. Like uh, impact is for their uh, their show coming up. They're deep into it. They're giving you guys exactly what's going to happen here. But Ring of Honor is like, ah, oh, we'll we'll let you guys know when the show happens. We're like, no, we want to know before the show happens, dude. Well, to yeah. be fair, for a couple of weeks before that, it was Ring of Honor has fifty million matches that all <laughs> matter. So pay attention, and I know you're tired, but it's three a.m. Get into True. it. So true. Yeah. A happy medium would be nice. Mm. How was Impact today? It was middle of the road. It was good. It was yeah. good. I didn't hate it. Um, Leo was Rush it Machine was Guns against uh, Aldis and Leo Rush? That mm-hmm. was the, the man. That was good. It that was, was good, good to be. Was, I liked it. Yeah, it was what you would expect that match to be. It was really good. They're telling a good story with Leo Rush being back, uh, or at least making making his impact debut. Looking forward to talking about that because uh, I think Crest and I were like, "What's what's Leo's character this time?" Yeah. Right? I need something mm-hmm. more than just man of the hour and I'm better than everyone. Mm-hmm. They're getting there. They did something cool with Leo tonight, so uh, I'm looking forward to talking about him more. I'm Absolutely. so happy for that guy. Like of all the, I know people make the retirement jokes and shots or whatever, but I'm like, I'm just, I'm so happy that that guy is, he's so great at wrestling. Like he's so, so yeah. great mm-hmm. that like the fact that he's happy and in a place where he feels like he can consistently keep going and um, is healthy to do so. Just, ah, uh, I love seeing his work. So it just fills, mm-hmm. it fills my heart with joy. 
Um, yeah, and exactly what you guys are saying is probably my biggest thing too. I'm like, I want to know what story he's going to tell this time around because he had the great run and and the best of Super Juniors, and there's a lot that's been going on. What story are you going to tell here in Impact Wrestling with this great, amazing X Division, you know, uh, team that you're joining? So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Some of the chats asking if Jonathan Gresham wrestled at all. He wrestled tonight against Allen Angels, had a bang of a match. Sure. Uh, Gresham is also in uh, Ultimate X at Slam. Yes. Shot at the X Division title. Very cool. So it's good to see. Listen, let's go, Kevin Knight. Yeah, uh, Kevin Knight's actually going to have uh, Speedball mm -hmm. next week on the show. So Ooh, good stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. I like Kevin Knight, man. He's got the hot. Yeah. He's, he he's does. So good. Impact's uh, killing it. That, though, the names we just named there, that's enough to get you to watch a show, honestly. Yeah. yeah Impact is really good. So mm -hmm. much talent that you never would expect to be in a place like that, uh, just from the you know, the way people used to talk about impact, mm -hmm. but uh, I think a lot more people are starting to figure out impacts, not the place it used to be, or the place that people say, you know, Oh, it's all undead realm and bullshit. And it's, no, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of good. I will say tonight, I understand why some people are like, I don't want to watch impact. I think I've been a witness to more murders and homicides and arsons <laughs> than I ever have in my entire life. Cause once again, someone tonight was laid to rest and really? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm, Impact, I have a lot of trauma, and it's from you. Impact got more deaths than Law and Order out this bitch. Listen, this don't, don't. <laughs> Look, I, I was just gonna say, maybe I think this might just be targeted to to white girls because we love those real they crime do. podcasts Murder more mysteries, than like yeah. anybody, man. It's like it's, I can't listen to them because I get nightmares. But white girls love those true crime podcasts. Like, maybe white girls like them. There, there is no mystery here. You watch them set PCO on fire. Okay, <laughs> what? <laughs> No. That's PCL. PCL no, that's die a he's bunch of dead. times. Yeah, no, he's he's fine. That's it. He's I'm I'm out. Right. I can't I can't exit mm -hmm. on a better note than PCO on fire. PCL so I'm out of here. Enjoy it's your post show. <laughs> We're out of here. Right, take care, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Oh, it's on the stupid thumbnail tonight. I love it. Hi. Chris. Every other week, someone's getting murdered. Every other week. Oh man, that's just what we do. Here, let's uh, let's set up for this. Let's Say do it. His name and he appears. You, 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 you Amara. Honestly, what a, what a, what a good idea. What a great idea. In we've fact, been talking about it, we've been waiting for something. We got it. And I mean, what? this is the guy. Now that I see that you fixed the camera, I now need to zoom out because I don't need, I don't need people this close. I need to everyone the to see that. Yeah, they need to get. I don't need y'all this close to the lie. Cresta's grill. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm calling the cops. Let me actually push my whole monitor back. <laughs> I, okay. I, I, edit, I edit all of this out for the audio listeners, so it's okay. This part, this part where it's just us, that gets edited right out for the audio realm. Yeah, but YouTube is like, what is transpiring here? <laughs> YouTube loves this garbage. It's wonderful. Not us being garbage, but us talking trash. I mean, it's a garbage can, not a garbage can't, Joel. Hey. <laughs> with a grouch over here. Uh, hi, chat. How are you? Shall we get into it? My body is ready. Let's go. Let's do it. It's uh, 10 18. Let's see if we can get a tight, uh, tight hour of this. <laughs> Let's go. We're done by 11, I believe. Wow. That, that's a short, that's a 40 minute, uh, that's 40 minute post show. Yo, Excalibur would do it in 20. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Hello, friends. We're back again. It's Fightful.com. It is Thursday, July the 6th, 2023. Two days from my mother's birthday. It's time for your Impact Wrestling post show. I am at Joel Pearl. And as always, I have my number one, my ride or die. No, not Lish Edwards. I have the Collider herself. Cresta Star is here. How you doing, Cresta? I am here. I'm excited. A good show of Impact tonight. And tomorrow I'm going to my first wrestling show. I'm going to go to SmackDown in New York City, and I'm so excited. It's a good week to be a wrestling fan, specifically Crest of the Star. That's a baller show to be going to for your first. You're going to enjoy the hell out of that. Madison Square Garden, SmackDown, live, the Tribal Chief on trial. Zelina Vega. This is a Zelina Vega stand account. I can't wait. I have a sign that says Zelina Vega sold these seats. <laughs> uh, can you take that. signs i don't know you can take signs whether they whether they get on tv or not is really dependent on where you're sitting and you know if it's worth putting on tv for you well 
Selena Vega is going to have it. This is Selena Vega's whole BC. <laughs> Oh, man. As always, folks, if you're joining us here on YouTube.com slash Fightful, go ahead, leave a thumbs up if you are here. Subscribe to us here on the channel because we are marching towards get this 100,000 subscribers. We're working on it. We're getting there. The shorts are doing good numbers. I just checked out that Roman Reigns pin that Sean got from uh, Money in the Bank. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is getting some people watching. you love to see it. Go ahead. Subscribe to us here on the channel. Tell your friends. Tell your family. It's wrestling. Y'all love it. We talk about Impact here every Thursday uh, after the ROH crew gets on out of here. And of course, we have our post shows every single night. And if you want to support us, you have a few ways to do it. Number one, FightfulSelect.com, the best five bucks in the business. All the exclusive news and content you want. We'll talk about that later. Or you can go ahead and leave a super chat here on YouTube.com slash Fightful. Any amount of your question or statement read on the air. How about this one from Dobby the Brain Heenan saying, can't stick around for the whole show tonight, but want to drop in and say solid show tonight. Cannot wait for Slammiversary. Send in your Super Chats. That's in the Super Chat, by the way. Thank you, Dobby the Brain Heenan, always supporting us here on the show. Appreciate you. Uh, and if you want to get beyond supporting us on Super Chat and you want to send in your Humper Chat, you can send it anytime. Tell us what show it's for. I got one queued up already. But Cresta will tell you how to send those in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you stretch your fingies like this and you type humperchats.com any dollar amount will get your question read on air like joe pearl why cresta why we get to keep a larger portion of it it makes us happy sean ross sap happy the algorithm happy man bear pig away humperchats.com so we're super cereal guys super, super cereal, cereal. Captain um, Crunch. <laughs> Amanda B sent us a humper chat saying is there anything better than saying joe henry's name and he appears Definitely saying Yu Yumura's impact is so fun. And it is. And that's why Cresta and I do this show because we have fun watching Impact. And this week, I had a lot of fun watching the show. Uh, how did you feel about Impact Wrestling this week, Cresta? Tonight was Impact Wrestling saying, Wrestling doesn't matter. Let's talk about these post match angles, baby. And they were great. They were great. I, the in ring mattered. Let me not say that. Everything in ring was snapping. But the, it was all about the post-match. And sometimes dessert is better than dinner, and I'm okay with that. And I, I think that's maybe why I enjoyed it. There was a lot of dessert on my table tonight. A lot of story advancement, getting closer to Slammiversary. We're what, about we're, we're eight days away, give or take? Yeah, I didn't. Need, I thought it was in like two weeks. They're like, no, next week, see it, girl. Yeah, it's coming up real fast. So let's just dig right in. BTI, George Iceman is Hold back. on. What's up? Slam anniversary is Saturday. Yeah, same nice collision. You're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna do. <laughs> or Jensen and I can just do the slam anniversary post show, and you can do the collision post show. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's also the Owen final, so you might want to do the collision post show. <laughs> Crest, your crest of star has blue screen. Please restart your crest of star. <laughs> that's for another time. Okay, BTI George Eisen. <sighs> He's got another week in the office or the coffee shop, whichever one he's in. I don't think he can actually yell in a coffee shop like that. So he's probably in an office somewhere. Uh, he talks about so shocking surprises at Slammiversary. Christian Cage, Dream Storm, Jay White, many more. And he asks if there will be shocking surprises this year's Slammiversary. I think the answer is yes. He says there have been hotel bookings made for alias names that he's never seen before. George, if you're watching, I know you've been told about our show now. Can you get me a hotel room for winter? Just just get in the DMs, okay? Thanks, George. First match of the night is Dirty Dango versus Crazy Steve. Super serious Dirty Dango, by the way. Crowd is chanting, we want Breezy. They're singing the Fandango song. Hey, well, him in the beginning. That was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, they were giving it to him, and Dango grabs the mic and says, I still hate pro wrestling. And I'm like, I get it, buddy. I really do. Uh, the match is fine. You know, Crazy Steve makes fun of Dirty of Dirty Dango. They do the Fandango dancing, tries to bite Dango, but Dango winds up uh, throwing Steve into the ring post, so he eats that. Dango misses his leg drop. Steve gets into control until he gets a thumb to the eye. Not before he gets that bite, though. He does bite Dirty Dango, as we do. And then the inverted DDT and Dango wins. Post-match, this is the most important part. This is the dessert. The first serving of dessert, Crest of Star. 
Uh, he says, even when I win, I still hate pro wrestling. And I'm like, <laughs> again, really buddy, I get it. <laughs> so he, said, he calls Santino a puppet and a disgrace. And then out comes Santino Morella. And he's still doing the vocal bit, which you and I talked about last week. I'm, whatever. I can't take <laughs> Let him rock. Place. Let him rock. You just got to let, let him cook. Let him cook, Joel. And he's like, the Cobra is Kung Fu. And, and I'm like, I'm like but, but was it? And he says he learned judo, jujitsu, and he'll make Dangle look like a fool in front of the crowd in Windsor. And this is great. He says, I'm going to serve you a, a slice of grapple pie. <laughs> with some I mean, you said he's in the gratitude era. Grapple pie. They, it made sense. You got to think, Joel. Think. <laughs> with, some, with some ass whip, he says. Not cool whip. Ass whip. Ass baby. whip. <laughs> you ever had, that's the star. Have you ever had ass whip in your life? That is for a different show, Joel. <laughs> we'll save that for the Collision Post show instead. And then Heath comes out from behind. He comes into the ring, takes out Dango with the house call. And uh, is, it the, is it the house call? No. What's Wake up call. Like, what's Wake the house call? <laughs> house call is somebody else's finisher that I'm totally blanking on, too. It's okay. Your Joel show. Pearl needs to be restarted as well. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. So he came out, he he hit the wake-up call and takes out Dango. Cool, okay. Dango has a promo later that we'll uh, get into. But let's get into the meat of Impact Wrestling. The main show opens with Edward Edwards taking on Frankie Kazarian. Honestly, Cresta, this match was better this time than the last, in my opinion. It had a bunch of distraction and had a bunch of little stuff here and there. But these two told a better story this time around, in my opinion. Uh, eventually... Lish gets involved, knocks out Kazarian's knee with the kendo stick, gets a Boston knee party to the face from Edward Edwards. And then Edward Edwards gets the cheating victory. Before we talk about what happens later, what do you think of the match, Cresta? I was actually surprised at the amount of time this match got. What I thought was going to happen absolutely did happen. But I got to give a shout out to Lish because you are reaching Vicky Guerrero levels of annoying and that takes talent. And I love it. I like this for her. I do. If you're going to heal it up, heal it up. And she said, okay. I mean, she's great. And the, the swinging, was it the swinging neck DDT on the outside? Was that a hurricane Rana DDT? Either way, her getting involved, putting her hands on Frankie Kazarian, setting it up later. Like he said, for Tracy, that was great. Lish hitting it with the Kendall stick. Great. Like I said, heel level Vicky Guerrero. Love it. Um, the match itself was actually surprisingly really good. Sometimes I have to turn my brain off when it come to Eddie Edwards. But tonight, him and Frankie Kazarian worked it. Him reversing out of the chicken wing twice, even with the cheating into the Boston knee party. That Boston knee party looked stiff. Speaking of which, that whole match was stiff. Even Lish, I feel like, girl, I feel like you ain't got punches to pull, but you work it extra hard tonight. I, I actually enjoyed this match. I was pleasantly surprised. We know Lish can work. We watched her when she busted out that uh, tornado DDT early outside on mm. Kazarian. You could see she had something really cool going on. Yeah. Uh, and I enjoyed that. And and her getting more and more involved made the setup for later make more sense, which again, you and I have talked about it and we'll get into it in a sec. Uh, I do want to shout out though, that big tiger driver from uh, Eddie Edwards on yeah. Kazarian, man, Kaz got up and Kaz landed hard and it looked great. There was a good 2.9. So there was, a, again, really, while it was a little bit overbooked in terms of having Alicia get involved and the referee knocked out and the low blows and all that, that was whatever. That I'll, I'll let it slide because later on Kazarian makes the challenge. We're going to do it again. Kazarian versus Eddie at Slammiversary. But this time, Tracy Brooks will be in Kazarian's corner and Lish will be in, uh, every, in Eddie's corner. Here we are. Uh, sorry. The camera back. said I had to go. <laughs> I'm back. You're good. All right. Yes. Did you hear everything I said? I missed that very last part because everything said goodbye. What did you say? <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. There was a there was a promo later on in the show. Kazarian sets it up. It's going to be Kazarian with Tracy Brooks versus the Edwards. Is, 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 is. I'm assuming it's a one is it one-on-one -on -one with their wives in their corners or is it a mixed tag? I don't think we actually it sounds like it was going to be a mixed tag between them. And I will say this: when I started watching Impact, even till now, Lish is always Alicia Edwards has always looked kind of like a loser, if you will. She's always lost or she's been in feuds where she kind of looks like she doesn't know what's going on. To see her wrestle like this makes me like, okay, girl. 
what else can you do? I want to see what else is in store for you. And maybe, you know, we get you out of the screaming Vicky Guerrero and into the ring again. Because I don't think she's necessarily bad. Maybe just never been in a position to shine bright. And this would be a great time. And plus, I heard Frankie Kazaria's life is scrap. <laughs> I want to see her. I want to see her wrestle. I heard she could scrap. I want to see it. <laughs> So it is one on one match. The uh, the wives are going to be in the corners of their husbands. Ooh. Hey, Tracy Brooks said that she didn't know she was going to come back to wrestling. So who knows? Maybe there's a conversation that's ongoing. Maybe something changes by next week. But for now, it's going to be uh, Tracy Brooks coming back uh, once again to Impact. She has appeared once last year uh, to, to she'll be in the corner of her husband, and then Alicia Edwards will be in the corner of her husband. So that's going to be a good time for Slammiversary. Looking forward to that, Tracy Brooks. Man, the one of the OG knockouts. I'm looking I'm forward. here for it. I can't wait. Leo rushes backstage with Gia Miller, and he's like, Hey, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win the X Division Championship. And in walks Nick Aldis, and he's like, Yeah, hey, we, we're not we're not friends. We're gonna we're gonna make history. And that we that's all that we're gonna have in common. I'm not gonna try and do a Nick Aldis. Stop thing. it. <laughs> Cause you make it way more funny than it is. Cause all this, all, I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm also hearing what's all this then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is an impromptu version of what's all this then. But again, because no one has hired me yet to take over the Jimmy Jacobs hosting what's all this then. Uh, so I, I can't I can't do it. So therefore no one can do it, I guess. Anyway, Nick Aldis says we have to win and jumping Chris Saban wasn't enough you get the win tonight we'll go our separate ways we'll never speak again but don't let your ego and your momentum get in the way and more importantly don't let it get in mine this is good stuff this was actually one of nick aldis's better backstage promos as a heel uh and i liked it it, it just two pain in the ass humans having to team up together what do you think of this whole setup i am actually in the opposite camp i didn't like it I, it's not that I didn't like it, like it. It's one of those things where it's like, Nick, all this, you, oh my God, that's the way you talk. Okay, I get it. But why are you talking down to Leo Rush? I get what you're trying to do. I get the story that's set up. Hey, nobody asked you. Thanks, but mind your business. But, bro, like, all right, it, you're still giving pompous. And I guess that's what it's supposed to be. But it kind of gave me what Alex Shelley was saying last week. Oh, God, shut up. <laughs> Maybe that's the character. Yeah, he's he's you want him to go away. It's not it's go away heat of a different kind. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I take it. it. Listen, wrestling is subjective. You don't like something, well, I get it. There are certain things that I hate. I don't know. Here we are. Uh singing Shira take on Swan and Rich Swan and Sammy Callahan. Uh yeah, okay. This is fine. This match happens. Really, the, the point is that Sammy Callahan gets the win with the Cactus Driver 97 with a kick to the face coming from Rich Swan. So that's the combo that they're going to use to win some matches, but not at Slammiversary. Anyway, uh, it's a match that happened. Then they're yeah. backstage. It's Moose and Myers being approached by Gia Miller. Moose and Myers were watching the match. Myers says that they are the best team in the tag division. Gia Miller pushes back and says, Moose, you know, Rich Swan beat you. And then Moose says, Rich and Swammy. Rich, Rich and Swammy. Rich, Swammy. Swammy. Rich and Sammy are getting reps and therefore they are not real competition their reps are not real competition so we're going to give them real competition next week moose challenges sammy and swan to a tag match Myers says he doesn't want to and moose says ah too bad we're doing it anyway and then Myers says thanks for making me go to work gia and gia's like you're welcome i guess so there you go moose and myers versus sammy and swan next week sure I mean, the backstage segment was funny. Really, Myers saying, like, wow, Gia, now I have to work next week. I feel that. Sometimes I want to go to work and not work. You know, I get it. Also, you're also working with Moose, though. You know he's going to cheat. So you got to work extra hard because, yeah, I get it. I under I felt that. I felt that. Said it once. Said it again. Feels like this ends with Moose and Myers winning the tag titles at Slammiversary when Moose pins Rich Swan. I don't know, but because I feel like they set it up to have the rascals in it, and that just feels like a that feels that feels cheap. We don't know yet. That's not official. The uh, the the Chris Bay versus Zachary Wentz match next week. That's gonna Fair. potentially tell the story of whether or not the rascals get at it. If they're a last minute addition, I still wouldn't have them win that quickly. I want Ace of Base, then I have Ace of Base retained, and then we do a one-on-one -on -one against the Rascals. That's fine. But uh, if they don't, then I can easily see Moose and Myers walking out with those tag titles. I just feel like the Ace of Base deserve a better send-off 
if they're going to drop the titles, then somebody else who's not even champion gets pinned and it goes to Musa. I mean, going to Musa Mize would be funny. <laughs> that would be really, that would be top tier funny. But at the same time, I feel like put a little bit more respect on them than that. Hey, listen, Moose just signed a new contract. It could work. Who knows? BTI follow-up time, baby. They're doing better at this. I love it. Every single week, it looks like BTI is getting some follow-up. Mm -hmm. uh, Dango has a promo, basically a pre-tape. says, I haven't watched wrestling since 1998 when the business is cool. And I'm like, oh, come on. Stop it. <laughs> I love his character. I hate this part. And then he says, you know, and then I step behind the curtain and I realize that my heroes are disappointments. And I love this part. He starts rattling off names of wrestlers he'd like. He says, Juventud Guerrero, who, by the way, is he butchered that man's name. And I wanted to be like, sir, I will. <laughs> says he loved a Blitzkrag, Viano's four and seven. Black Tyrus Sr. and Asia from WCW. Which... Wasn't Asia a ripoff of China? Absolutely, yes. That's what I, I was like. I feel like I know who that is, but my brain was like, nah, that's a fever dream. <laughs> she was she was a shorter white woman. I think she was white, but either way, it's another bodybuilder, shorter than China, not nearly as striking in physique. Anyway, he says he talks about his real gig, which is flipping houses, by the way, and concrete and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, then he tells him, he says, if I could tell Impact Talent to do one thing is to go back to school. And then the next part of the segment is, are you prepared for Santino? And he says, well, I grew up, but Santino is still living in 2010 and he's a one hit wonder. It's like a Star Trek convention. It's Nerdville. There is sweaty handshakes everywhere. And then he says there's a match with Heath next week. He says Heath would be great as a forklift driver at, at a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Or he could be Viano 13 if they're still trying to get money out of the Viano franchise. <laughs> and it's Horrible, a, a ride operator at the county fair. This is the last thing you want to be is the next Santino Morella. This was this was fine. This was funny. I don't hate it. Super serious Dango is still fun for me. What do you think of this? I thought this was fantastic. I think super serious Dango is literally saying, you know what? If social media was a gimmick. <laughs> And I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's to me, it's one of those high concept gimmicks that on surface it's funny. But if you really read too much into it, and I love reading too much into it, it's my favorite thing to do. It's kind of like a commentary on some wrestling fan. Like, yeah, I hate it. And I do all this other cool stuff. And I guess last time wrestling was cool, you know, it's like, you know, like it was back when, you know, you know, Paul Bear was right. And that's the last time it was cool. I get it. I totally get the gimmick. And it's funny because it's it's really one of those no you kind of jokes. And I, I live. I live for it. It's great. It's great. I want him to get beaten into submission and go back to do a goofy stuff just for it to come full circle. But not right now. I like super serious, but not really Dango. It's fine for what it is. He's wanted to do this for a long time. And you know what? It's entertaining. He's finding different avenues to make it entertaining. The meta stuff sometimes gets obnoxious, but I think that's the point and it works yeah it's like it's to me it's getting to the level of orange cassidy like i said on the surface it's ha ha ha, ha. but when you overthink it it's like sir what are you <laughs> and that's that's the best part about it too is that i want to see him get the shit kicked out of him yes i'm, I'm not saying get him off my screen because i'm enjoying these yes. promos every week but i want to see santino I want, I want to see Anthony Corelli beat the shit out of him. <laughs> you want Santino thing. to break kayfabe and beat up Dango for real? <laughs> no, I don't want him to break kayfabe. I want him to say, "I'm for this, I am not Santino Morello. That's a character I play. I am. And I want I wanted that transformation. I, said, I, get, yeah. I get what you mean. You're not going to get Santino Morelli. You're going to get Anthony Corelli at this show. Because, again, he's appeared as Anthony Corelli on Impact Programming. So it wouldn't be a far-fetched idea to have him do it but they want to play the role of, of the serious guy versus the not so serious guy but the serious not so serious guy could beat the shit out of them it's fine it's it's fine it's just not what i would have done if i had the opportunity to book the angle i just think this is a very unserious match from two unserious people and i'm gonna have a good time <laughs> Angels versus Gresham was a good time for me. Uh, Diener accompanies him and Khan as well. The design come out and Diener's telling Angels on the whole way down the ramp to fall in line with him. And Angels, Angels is kind of doing this thing. So he's wearing all black and the designer wearing all white, which is kind of what's going on in Ring of Honor right now, where Stu Grayson, formerly of the Dark Order, is with the Righteous. The Righteous wear all white, but 
Stu's wearing all black. It's really, it's a cool dichotomy. It's a cool juxtaposition of these two. Uh, both men are from Atlanta, so you know the crowd was into this, which I love. There's some good mm-hmm. back and forth suplex attempt spots that turned into a sunset flip. That was good. Lots of really solid chain wrestling. You got to see that Angels is a lot better than what you've seen so far, which is something mm-hmm. that Gresta, you I've brought up multiple times. Uh, eventually, Gresham gets the octopus in after a ton of counter pins. They do the whole spot and then gets the submission on Angels. Talk to me about this match. I know you must have enjoyed parts of this. So let's start from the beginning before we even got that. They cut back from commercial. You hear the design music, the design intro play. And as soon as they cut to the design, all you hear is Diener just yelling at Ains. I'm like, yo, dog, the match didn't even start. <laughs> I've said and you've said Angels it does fine, and then for some reason, Diener starts spazzing on him, like, do this, do that. And it's like, Diener, half the time we're losing because of you. Relax. This match was really good, and I'm glad that Jonathan Gresham was his dance partner. The only way this could have been equal or better is if you had Speedball. And I would say the same thing. The only way that I would have been equal or better is if you had Jonathan Gresham. This was a great showcase of Angel's talents, that spitball wrestling gremlin, if you will. He did amazing. Um, Let me look at my notes right quick, because I'm thinking of this off the top of my head. Because I remember at the end, when he shook, he's like, shake my hand, and Dean is having, no. It was right like in the middle of the middle of the match when Diener was going, not Diener, Angels was going up top and beating the crap out of Gresham. And then for no reason, Diener started yelling at him like, do this, do that. I'm like, bro, he literally threw him out the ring and you're yelling at him to finish it. He's trying to finish him and you are distracting him more so he can't compete. He can't perform. And it's like, bro, you're overcompensating. It's it's kind of really you at this point. If you're the design, the design is flawed and yikes. So this is, again, it's the same It's the same story that we're telling with the design where Diener's getting pissed off at Angels mm-hmm. and Angels is being like, no, I had him dead to rights. Like, you do, I don't know what you're... Basically, Diener being an insane human being, and that's... Yeah. It's weird. Uh, after the match, you've got Diener super-duper pissed as Gresham's extending his hand and wants Angels to shake it, and Angels wants to shake it, and Diener doesn't want that. But eventually, uh, Angels shakes Gresham's hand, says he doesn't need Diener or the design anymore, and that's that's seemingly it. That could be the break for Angels from the design, and that, for me, is a big opportunity for Angels to get away from being guy in a group that just gets underappreciated and eventually leaves uh-huh. and potentially goes out on his own. Does he win the X Division Championship tomorrow? No. Is there potential for him to be a breakout star in, in Impact? 100% yes. Absolutely. Uh, he has a great Northern Lights suplex, by the way, to Alan Angels. Gets his yeah. toes up perfectly and everything. So shout out to him. Shout out to Gresham. Both men put on a great match. Very much worth going out of your way for. It's not too long, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. So yeah. we'll check it out. Uh, Ace of Bays are next. They got a little promo. We were talking about this earlier with Wentz and uh, Bay. This is where they set it up. Uh, Ace of Bays is talking about how they had the Multiverse United four-way. They won that match. But this time there's two more makeshift tag teams. But that's no problem because they are the tag team. Rascals walk in. They want to be added to the Slammiversary tag team title match. And Bay's like, no, you never won these tag titles. So why should you get a shot? Then Wentz goes on to challenge Bay to a singles match. And if Wentz wins, the Rascals get added. So that's going to be next week. See where they go. Nothing bad. I liked it. It was a great, it was a great little short promo. Um, I do agree with Ace of Bay with the you guys are makeshift. And also you can't just walk in here. Favorite line of it is at the end when one said, we'll see, because in case you forgot who I am, when they walk off, Ace, I'm not going to lie. He cooked me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. He cooked me a little geek. <laughs> that was great. That's just, to me, simple character work, simple, easy, effective. I hope they don't lose. I don't care the rascals just came back. Fight with your mom about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine by me. It's going to be a good match. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Trinity and Deanna Peraza are backstage. Trinity walks into Deanna's dressing room and says, hey, I appreciate you having my back. Deanna says, I want you at 100% at Slammiversary when I beat her or when I beat you. And Trinity picks up on that. And she says, wait a minute. You said you want me at 100% when you beat me. But maybe that's why you took so long to get into the ring last week. I love that Trinity brought that up because in other companies, they may not have even talked about that. That's And I'm not going to be specific because it's not just one company. A lot of companies don't pay off what happened on TV or uh-huh. no one no one goes back and watches the tape. I love that Trinity says, 
I watched the tape. You took a while. What happened? And Deanna just gets defensive and says, you know what? I don't need anybody's help. So you know what? I used to do this thing called the Champ Jam Challenge. Next week, I'm going to bring it back. Cresta, I know who it is. You know who it is because I told you last week because tape, the show is taped. But uh, we're not going to spoil it. But I will say I'm very excited for next week's Champ Challenge. But what did you think of this backstage with Deanna Perrazzo and Trinity? <laughs> I'm going to echo what you said. I like that they didn't do the, oh, no, I'm a baby face, but I'm so silly. I like that they didn't do that trope. And she was like, yo, bro, at the same time, Trinity, be for real. I, I also, Deanna, be for real. Deanna Perrazzo is an amazing performer, but Deanna Perrazzo has the same problem Charlotte Flair has. I don't believe you as a good guy. I'm sorry. I don't believe you as a good guy. You can be sweet as pie. I believe that you want to do the right thing. But you, the, the devil keep talking to you. I think you listen. <laughs> I think like no matter what she does, she has that charisma. Like I'll break your arm. I don't care how nice you think I am. I will break your arm. I'll break both your arms at the same time. So what's good? I thought this was great. I think it builds a necessary tension between her and Trinity, which I feel the baby face versus baby face dynamic typically lacks. So I like it. I like because, oh, she just oozes that. Yo, I don't care. I'll break. Don't question me. I'll break your arm. Do you think that Deanna boxed a kangaroo when they were down under in Wagga Wagga? They showed the, the zoo footage. They didn't show all the footage. All I'm saying is, do you think Deanna boxed a kangaroo? Boxed? No, but if the kangaroo messed around and got to the ground, I think she would have, you know, <laughs> the Venus the Milo for the kangaroo. Those Boxes kangaroo she, arms are really small, man. That doesn't matter. She, she breaks arms. That's what she does. It's true. You think Macklin tried to beat up a kangaroo? Those kangaroos will beat him up. It's okay. Uh, I mean, honestly, tonight, Macklin, you might want to lay low. So I don't know, Joe Pearl. He's good for it. <laughs> He's good he didn't for it. do it. In the words of Billy Joel, he didn't start the fire. Let's talk about it. PCO in the good hands. Scott the Lord <laughs> joins commentary. And the good hands say it's hard to tell the difference between PCO and the mutants in Georgia. I love the stupid. They, because they're an 80s throwback tag team, they make fun of the local town and it just works for the good hands. It's so stupid, but I love it. At this it's point, they need to steal from SCU. This is the worst town I've ever been in. <laughs> I would love Frankie Kazarian to be a heel and bestow upon them that that would be yeah. great <laughs> this is the worst sound i've ever been in pco is the monster who will get slayed by these good hands uh but that's not really what happens pco hits a reverse ddt and a pco salt on john skyler gets the win and then demore goes to join pco in the ring and then hotch goes after scott demore demore hits a sky high shout out to d -Lo brown on jason hotch it's a little rough, but hell yeah, it's Scott Demore. He's still getting his wits back about him. Uh, Scott Demore teases hitting a Canadian destroyer, but then out come Bully. He's on the stage. Steve Macklin comes up behind Lobo's PCO, hits Scott Demore with a chair. Macklin handcuffs Scott Demore to the top rope. Good hands get a table. Macklin and Bully double choke slam PCO through the table. And then they throw PCO down the ramp to the backstage, and Bully screams, watch and learn. And then they do a, a, a kind of an elongated segment in the ring where they're kind of like teasing Scott Demore while he's handcuffed to the ring. That part was a little extra for me. I didn't really need it. But let's really get into the, ma the, the main part of this. They go to the parking garage. They start pouring battery acid down PCO's throat. And this whole time, you've got Matt Raywald being like, this is a very disturbing scene here in the parking garage. It was so much ASMR murder mystery. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it seriously. And I bust out into laughter. And I'm trying to. <laughs> Steve Macklin going for a birdie. I mean, you could tell that maybe the audio, whatever, is a different audio. But good golly. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Size. I, I felt very Mr. Rogers. Bully Ray has been an under five today on the on the putt and on the putting green. <laughs> you know, he's have a good day. We're going to golf clap for PCO. PCO went through that table. PCO getting battery acid down his throat. And then they're going to have lighter fluid all over PCO. And then Welcome we'll light that ass on fire. <laughs> We're going to light him on fire and you'll hear such sounds <laughs> as... <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't laugh, but it was great. PCO's back is set on fire. He freaks out, flails around for a second. We go to break. Uh, and then call claps in the arena. <laughs> I just, I'm sitting there like you are. <laughs> it's like, why is Raywalt doing golf commentary on this? 
And then Hannafin, they come back and Hannafin's like freaking out over the, the, the lighter fluid and everything. That's so weird. It was so weird <laughs> done. And it's just a whisper. It was very strange. Uh, it was great. It was, it was, it was it's cop. I listen, I love impact, all your flaws and all. And that took the sting off of watching a man get battery acid poured in his mouth and then set on fire. I thought they were gonna run him over at that point. It was given Wally Coyote. PCO cannot die. Uh then backstage, <laughs> Scott Damore goes around looking for PCO. So uh th- th- that's that's gonna be the big hook, I guess. Is uh, is PCO alive? I'll give you a hint. PCO is alive. Well, I mean, PCO is like, he's not alive, but he is alive because it's PCO. He doesn't really die. He just kind of reanimates because he has a move. Anyway, that's that's the segment. PCO got, got burned and he is MIA. Well, either we're going to see him at Slammiversary or someone else is going to be there. And honestly, I don't think it'll happen. But personally speaking... I would like, uh, sorry about your damn luck. I would like for him to come back. Don't think it'll happen. But I, I something in my heart would really, I know what it is. I saw on Impact on YouTube that they were playing Sam versus from 2006. And they had Christopher Daniels and uh, AJ Styles. He was, uh, it was versus, I think it was a America's most wanted. And I'm like, wow, he looked great then. Also, Christopher Daniels looked really, Christopher Daniels was the guy back in the day. Holy crap. He was the man. He was him. So like, I would like to see him come back and help him. If that's the hook where it's a PCO and him and the more it's like, psych, I'm not going to wrestle. Okay. I'd be okay with the old bait and switch. Do you know what the, uh, do you know what the main event from that show was? Was it? Uh, Samoa Joe versus I didn't watch the whole thing, so I, I remember the hook line was Samoa Joe versus somebody. I just saw the AJ Styles uh Daniels match versus AMW, and like I said, Christopher Daniels was him. So, you're you're you got the semi main, at least one of the competitors. It's Mimosa, Mimosa Joe takes on your favorite wrestler in Impact PCO. No, the one Bully who Ray? no, he's not there anymore. But you love to quote his shit. Oh, Scott Steiner! Steiner and Joe was the semi-main, but the main event of Slammiversary 06, this is the one, was the tagline, was the King of the Mountain match for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. It was the first one. It's Jeff Jarrett, Christian Cage, Abyss, Ron Killings, and Sting! What a card. What a time to be a wrestling fan. What a... To an extent, I do feel like I missed out on quite a bit i cannot be super duper mad because you know i was being a real life person but what a time to watch aj styles grow up you know and come up in the wrestling industry and what a time is i had to look up pictures of pco when he looked and pco was him back in the day too i was like hey all right good shout out to impact keeping these people employed i i got a newfound respect but also battery acid in his mouth how was he's got a cinder block been buried i don't know if they respect you i I don't know. <laughs> well, you know what, Cresta? You know how people respect me? How do they respect you? They respect me and the rest of the team at Fightful by subscribing to FightfulSelect.com, the best five Sadly. bucks in the business. That's how it goes. You want your blood and guts news? You want to know who's the fifth man, brother? We got some of that news maybe over on FightfulSelect.com or at least the allusions to it. So go check that out. You want an Athena interview? Guess what? The Grap City Boys did that. And the interview notes are up and ready for you now on FightfulSelect.com. AEW contract news, signing updates, all the fun stuff. FightfulSelect.com. Alex's Sour Graps. You want you want a, a, a Sean Ross Sap Q&A? FightfulSelect.com. You want a backstage report every Monday morning? FightfulSelect.com. Sometimes it's in the afternoon because we're busy people, man. We, get, we do stuff. We got... So many things to do. We have a life, cause it's now or never. Subscribe to Fightful for five bucks. I thought you were gonna find a rhyme there, but he didn't. But for the five bucks in the business, you don't. You don't. Not really. everyone's a banger, Joel. <laughs> no, not everyone's a banger. But every every everything on Fightful Select is. So go ahead, subscribe today. Five bucks. And yes, some people are like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to find that news on Twitter in a few minutes or on threads or on Blue Sky. If you have a code for Blue Sky, maybe you don't. Okay. Either What's way. Blue Sky? 
anyway, so uh, I, I'm there. <laughs> so it matters to me. But the point that I'm trying to make is, listen, that news may pop up somewhere, but it's going to be poorly aggregated. And it's not going to be good. And it's not going to be right. So get it right. Get it from the source. And for five bucks, you can support me and Cresta and Sean and Kate and Jeremy and everyone else who works on the website because that is how this, this, this is how I get paid. Okay. So five same. bucks. Same, same. Yeah. There you go. Five bucks. Best in the business. Five select dot com. Let's continue. PCO, battery acid, down his throat. I'm sorry to inform you guys, but we are back in the ring and PCO has been burned alive outside. You can send your condolences over to Impact Management. <laughs> Scott Moore, you're wanted now. Giselle Shaw <laughs> takes on Courtney Rush. Uh, Shaw lost in week one of Amazing Race Canada. She lost twice in Australia. She is a very big loser right now, so she's Damn. gotten to back. <laughs> Hey, man, I'm just saying. Throughout the match, this whole thing is about uh, the surrounding family for Giselle Shaw getting involved. Uh, Savannah Evans gets involved. Jessica tries to stop it. She gets shoved under the stairs. Jay Vidal gets involved. Shaw gets the leverage pin, hits the ropes, feet on the ropes, gets the win. Giselle Shaw beats Courtney Rush. I have nothing else to add unless you... I thought that this match, they had great chemistry. And I will say Giselle Shaw, seeing from when she came out till now, she has been busting her ass and she looked great. I low-key, high-key want to see more matches between the two. And also, I love Courtney Rush, how she wrestles completely different than Rosemary. And that takes skill. I that's, Those are my two cents. I would love to see them wrestle again because the chemistry they had in the ring, I thought was fantastic. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Courtney Rush is very often overlooked. She is underrated. She is a great performer. She's been in this business a long time, and she continues to do really, really excellent stuff. So uh, go go check out stuff. You know what, Courtney Rush and Jessica, they're going to be team captains for their respective teams at a Smash Wrestling event coming up soon in London, Ontario, Canada. So uh, go check that out, okay? It'll be it'll be Courtney Rush as Rosemary. So just do the face paint. I like them both. Give them, give them both of them. They're both real good. You know who else is really good? Kenny King, Sheldon Jean. Thirsty women everywhere, Cresta Star. Can't Come on, believe. man. I'm never thirsty. I'm so hydrated. I don't know what you're talking about. They, they're walking up to Kenny King, asking him to sign stuff, taking photos, <laughs> shoving dollar bills down his tight pants. And Kenny King's like, no, and he takes the money anyway. And then the next woman comes up, and they're just like, no, not you too. And she's like, no, I'm actually a really big fan. And then ends up saying, I really like the song that, that they wrote about. <laughs> and they says, don't you dare say his name. And, of course, out comes Joe Hendry. And uh, Gene, Sheldon Gene pipes up and he's like, hey, I don't think this Joe Hendry guy is serious. You know, we could beat you up right now. What's what's making you think that we don't just double team your ass? And then he says, oh, that's because uh, I believe. And I believe that if you say his name, he appears and up comes Yu Yu Yumura. <laughs> that was great. That was great because he literally just. And like Sheldon Gene and Kenny were like, yo, where did you come from? Did you come from the city? <laughs> Say his name and he appears. You are you, Amara. Now I gotta add that to my soundboard too. <laughs> I almost did tonight. And then he, we learn by the way that uh, Japanese word for champion is champion. Duolingo is very proud of us right now. Yeah, it's really helpful. It's really good. Uh, next week on the program, it's going to be Zachary Wentz versus Chris Bay, Kevin Knight versus B-Ball, Mike Bailey, Rich Swan, and Sammy Callahan taking on Moose and Myers and the Diana Parazzo Open Challenge. There's other stuff on the card too, but it hasn't been announced yet. So we'll find out next Thursday. Uh, let's go to the main event. Motor City Machine Guns take on Leo Rush and Nick Aldis. There's some really good stuff here. I, I did enjoy this match. One thing I love is that Motor City Machine Guns, fantastic tag team, fantastic singles wrestlers. Leo Rush, Nick Aldis are typically really good singles wrestlers, but them together worked really well. Aldis has a great pump handle toss on Shelly early, made Aldis look great, made Shelly look like he can take it. Uh, there's some really good back and forth tag teaming. Shelly getting beat down by Rush and, uh, Rush and Aldis at the same time makes the hot tag. Then they do the same thing to Leo Rush on the other side later in the match. I love that stuff. Eventually, let's just get to the finish. Uh, Aldis and Shelly are on the outside brawling. Rush, I keep my notes say Rush. <laughs> I understand. So I think of Rush, and I'm sorry out there. Uh, Leo Rush low blows Chris Saban, hits the final hour, pins the X Division champion. That's how we finish this night. What do you think of this match? And we'll dig into the main events. 
I really thought this match was a Leo Rush showcase, and I'm not mad about that. He looked great here. The only spot I could really highlight from Nick Aldis was the Queensland Cloverleaf. That looked really good. It looked like he was really about to break old boys back and give him a stretching. But Leo Rush looked fantastic this match. And I always have to give it up to Motor City Machine Guns. Whether they win or they lose, the people they're in the ring against always look better for it. They're really good. Like, I, I know a lot of people say hate the term enhancement talent. But, like, these guys literally enhance and elevate everyone they're in the ring with. And even when Shelly was becoming champion, he made that promo. He said that promo that I'm the one who changed the Seth Rollins, your AJ Styles. They literally elevate people. And I think that, um, oh, my God, Aldis looked really phenomenal when he was in. But this was all Leo Rush. And they complimented it. Even when Leo Rush, when they hit him with the, I forgot what it was. It was like a, a knee spot. And then they clotheslined him off of um, save Shelly's shoulders, and then he just fell back and looked like he got the clock, his clock clean. That was great. I thought they are fantastic working together, but also Leah Rush with the low blow. No matter how strong you are, <laughs> there's always one move that's a one hit or quit, and that's the yam bag shuffle. And it worked. By the way, just to put it out there, at one point, Leo Rush is a Mishinoku driver. And then Aldis at the same time hits a top rope elbow and it's a 2.9. That's on, I believe that's on Saban. Yes, yes. And it is so good and so crisp. There's just some really good double teaming going on and yeah. some good double team action. Uh, they do the magic killer. They do the facial. They do the skull and crossbones, which is the other, the, the, the move that you were thinking of. Uh, and eventually, yeah, Rush getting the pin rush having a standout match i wholeheartedly believe that mm. and it is it, it's clear as day that leo rush is a great wrestler yes it's clear as day that leo rush is going to bring some some more eyes into impact especially in that x division that already has some eyes on it uh but it's it's clear as day that they have an investment here to make and if leo has the ability to tell the story outside of the ring then we are going to see a different Leo Rush. And it started tonight, and I like that. So good main event, good episode of the show. Uh, Slammiversary is in, was it? It's in a week and a day. It's a week and two days. It's on a Saturday. Uh, uh -huh. So we'll be here, as we will, on the 16th. It will definitely be me. It will most likely be Steven Jensen. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I double booked myself. I'm so sorry. You didn't, you didn't double book yourself. You have Collision. Collision is... I, I mean, listen, last week it wasn't so much the bigger show, but it will most likely be a big show that week because it is the Owen finals. Mm. So Cresta might not be with us for the Slammiversary post show. That's okay. Jensen and I will take care of it. We'll, we'll hunker down like men and tell Slammiversary stories or whatever. So we'll have fun. No we'll girls miss. allowed. Ew. <laughs> Pretty much. But as always, Cresta is here. I am here. Uh, we're here every single Thursday night after the Ring of Honor post show. If Ring of Honor ever goes three hours like it has in the past, we end up on Fightful Overbooked, which, by the way, you should go subscribe to right now. Go to youtube.com slash Fightful Overbooked. And until then, Cresta, what you got going on? Tell them. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, tomorrow I will not be live on my respective channels on Twitch and TikTok. But if you are going to the Madison Square Garden show in New York City to SmackDown, don't be weird. But say hi. I'll say hi back. We take some pictures. Uh, Saturday, I will be here on Fight. Not Yeah, Fightful. Jesus Christ. Saturday, I'll be here on Fightful again with your rest friend, Iridian, and Riccicino. I don't know if Sean Ross Sapp will be with us. Maybe might. But I'll see you this Saturday. Mondays and Wednesdays, you can catch me over on TikTok or Twitch at Cresta Star. If that was a lot of information, I completely understand. Cresta the Star is my Twitter. There's a link tree in my bio. Super easy. Joe Pearl, where can the people find you? If you think for one minute that Sean Ross Sapp isn't going to show up and talk about a show that will be in Regina, then you got another thing coming, okay? He's going to be there making Regina jokes while the Canadians roll our eyes and be like, buddy, we got past this in the sixth grade. Okay, so wait a minute. Is that really the name of the place in Canada? Yeah, is it it is the, it's the capital of the province of Saskatchewan. I thought he was just saying Regina wrong. It really is Regina. And I'm Regina. me and Shara. Oh, me and Shara Sapp are about to be immature on Saturday. All right. You people are <laughs> awful. We're proud to be in America. And it's America Month. <laughs>
month. America month? What is this? It's America month. It's America month. That, oh that's what I'm told, at least. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I work with children. <laughs> you're tired. You're beat up. You're old. You work with children. Yeah, children. <laughs> Where's your muffin? I have one, but it's waiting for me tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be my lunch or something. I don't, whatever. Okay. I am actual for all Jamie L P E A R L. Uh, Jeremy Lambert and I get in the weeds every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern over on Fightful Over Booked. Kate and I are live every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's Joel and Kate at 8. Uh, that show seems to do numbers because y'all are insane and I love you. Uh, Cresta and I are here every Thursday on the main talking about Impact Wrestling. And of course, whenever there's a pay per view, we talk about that too in Impact World. So, or, or a special, we do those too. Until then, ladies, gentlemen, friends beyond the binary, we'll see you in the next one.